<laughs> and I just don't carry on If a vision isn't stereo <laughs> <laughs> To me she'll always be the tops My sweet little psychologist <laughs> She's the one I, one I, one I She's the one I, one I love She's the one I, one I, one I She's the one I, one I love <laughs> Now you might wonder what she's thinking Cause it looks like she's winking <laughs> In arguments I yell and cry But you just can't see the other side <laughs> It's worse than it looks, says her mother. Cause she's blind in one eye, blonde in the other. Well, she's the one I, one I, one I. She's the one I, one I love. She's the one I, one I, one I. She's the one I, one I love. Now how it happens, she just won't spill. Was it Scissor Sprint or William Tell? <laughs> <laughs> well, the eye got put out and was never found. Gone to take a look around. <laughs> My Colombo cutie, pop pop punky. <laughs> Sammy Jr., Sandy Duncan, oh, she's the one I, one I, one I, she's the one I, one I love, she's the one I, one I, one I, she's the one I, one I love, she's the one I, one I, one I, she's the one I, one I love. Hey, that's an alarm clock. Hello, good morning. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Ladies. Christy Lee will be at the news desk. There's Pat Godwin. There's Josh Arnold. Sixter. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee. Christy rocking the navy in black. It's very in right now, Tom. Is that right? Oh, very in. I was worried about that. Oh, navy in black. Brown and black, not so much. Navy and black. Dark navy. Oh. I remain your humble servant, Chick McGee. Here is Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. We'll open with some uh, mail, uh, which I like to do. I got some mail. Go ahead. Uh, this comes to us from Anne. I am. Anne writes... Anne uh, of a Thousand Gables. No, that's not right. Love uh, <laughs> watching you on YouTube. Oh. The best looking crew, P.S. Chick and Josh are the two most handsome. Ooh. Well, how about that? Thank you, Anne. Oh. Well, I say we <laughs> make out. You'd be, me and you, Josh. It's hmm. oh going with this. <laughs> Only fans. Uh, I want you guys. Yeah, you I want your beards to stick together like Velcro. Oh, oh. Could we get uh, a thousand people a buck a piece? Well, a buck a piece. A buck a piece. Ten bucks a piece. Ten bucks a piece. Yeah. To see us make out. What do you think, Tom? Is that all right with you? No. Uh, oh, see, come no, on. Uh, we were looking for a name for uh, the Light and Lame Show, which is uh, the alternate version of this show, and. Um, we have things like, uh, what is it, um, Mandatory Metallica. No, it's Mandatory Manilow. Yeah. Um, we, we have, uh, uh, let's see, what, what else is on there? Oh, the, the traffic with, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Captain Tennille? Is that who does our traffic? Captain Tennille. Right. Yeah. He, wears a, he wears a ship's captain hat, the whole thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, get the bread out <laughs> instead of get the lead out. That's my favorite. Uh, this is a suggestion for, instead of two for Tuesday, Toto Tuesday. Oh, a little something we call Africa. <laughs> da, 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 da. Toto yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> so Dear we'll, gang. Yes. I fear I am raising the next Chick McGee. I was listening to the show on the 24-7 app, which is fabulous. You should do this all the time. Good stuff. Think of what we do right now for four hours, give or take, wherever you're listening. And then think of it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
Doesn't that sound great? Like a nightmare? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, now I'm out. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this uh, this is Adam. He was listening to the app when the Ace Cosby joke of the day came on, and the punchline was something about stationary paper. Yeah. My 10-year-old daughter, Hannah, asked if that was a joke. Yeah. And I said, yes. And she stared at me for a moment and said, no, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the joke. How did it go again? Uh, what do you call a paper plane that doesn't fly? What do you call a... Paper airplane that doesn't fly. Paper airplane that doesn't fly. fly. Stationary. 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 An excellent joke. Yeah, one of the excellent out of Tom. Uh, yeah, oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, maybe she didn't understand uh, the stationary. I'm guessing. Probably not familiar yeah. with the... Uh, yeah, ten-year-old? Ten-year-old no stationary. Yeah, ten-year-old nah, girls. I don't think so. You don't write notes. Like Move them in the stationary. No, I don't. People don't write. Anything. Did you ever write notes and fold them up like a football and pass them to sure. the cute girls? I know you did, but I'm uh, talking to uh, all boys. Uh, what are we talking? Like a do you like me? Yes, no, Check maybe. Check a box. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, what was the thing where you would go like this? Do you remember that? I, I've seen girls doing that, but yeah. I don't know what it is. We take you'd, the paper, be, you fold it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never figured that out. And either. you would ask it questions like the yeah, eight ball, right. does he like me? Mm -hmm. Side yeah. point to yes. Yeah. <laughs> DTF, like, whoa. <laughs> that might be All what right. it is these days. Yeah, we All jumped right. ahead. <laughs> who, who told him DTF? <gasps> who, who told him? Willie? <laughs> no, I didn't tell him, but he thinks that you use DTF like you use you up, like that yeah. kind of text. Remember oh, we geez. talked about this before? Yeah. You don't? Aren't no. you? No, you're skipping a bunch of steps. Yeah. <laughs> like the romance. It's more conversational. You'd be like, oh, yeah, Josh, I was talking to that girl at the bar last night. Dude, she is into you. I think she's totally DTF. You don't just send it to someone and hope that they'll... <laughs> oh, come on right now. Yeah. You don't just walk up to the bar and go, good evening, DTF. <laughs> I'm hard, you know? In Tom's defense, somebody explained it to us like that. Oh, yeah. for real? Yeah, and, and you don't... just text DTF. Now, huh. I have a question. Uh, I think Josh and I are probably the only two in here that uh, make an, some effort to use proper punctuation in the realm of texting. Good for you so guys. Should wow. it be DTF question mark? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, not just DTF I statement. It, I, I think it could that. be if DTF... If it was a response... I think it could be DTF ellipsis. Oh, yeah. Willie really hates the ellipsis. Whenever I text him, I've got to go back and take no, them. No, I don't hate you. You just don't know how to use them. Oh, ellipsis yeah. says that you have something else that you're implying that you're not saying. I just mean it's I'm changing the topic. Hmm. Uh, like it could be, hey, do you want to have some lunch? Um, dot, dot, dot. Then. And thought, then dot, 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 I DTF? A, I, no. no, then dot, dot, dot. I got a new place to detail my car, dot, dot, dot. Oh, so what you're you, using it as it, a... An ellipsis, honestly, it actually means more to come. You so know, you, yeah. you know who he reminds me of? Josh, you might be a little bit too young. Remember when Larry King did the thing in the USA Today and he'd just, like, throw out oh, random, yeah. random that's, notes? Uh, that's exactly what that sounded like. Uh, <laughs> Want to have lunch? Hey, I found a new place to detail my car. <laughs> <laughs> how about those Yankees? And yeah. Boy, this is really a heat wave, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that, that's exactly how I do it. Yeah. <laughs> this is really a heat wave. Uh, You're an odd man. Sometimes I'll, do an, I'll go back and do a second text if I think it's... The one is about something really serious, the other is not. That can be awkward. Or you have a really serious text, then five days later you've got to send them something silly, and you got to, oh, boy, there's the one about the tragic death of... <laughs> well, oh, Lord. I'm not the only one that experiences this. Apparently, no, just, maybe, just, I, judging by the crickets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I just I delete text immediately, so I don't... You do? You don't no, have them yeah. on your phone? I hate having text in No there. kidding. Huh? I feel the same uh, way about dirty dishes, so we're kind of the same. Oh. Yeah, I don't like to have them. I like to have a picture in my contacts of the person. Me too. So I, that it, when it, it comes bugs, up? It bugs me if it's like the letter of their first name mm -hmm. in, the, in the gray circle. Huh. No, I don't care for that. Here you go. Can I give you guys a little bit of Tom three dots, a little Tom ellipses? I'd love it. Here we go. This is about, We're at lunch. I'm there. He's running a little late. The, uh, now, and this is an actual text to actual, you? 100% No, percent no text. preparation. He okay. just said, I'm probably 10 minutes away, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Heavy traffic, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh. You can order me one of those steak sandwiches, please, which the ending's fine. <laughs> I, it just seems odd The dot, dot, dots right. imply that I'm in traffic. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It just seems like there's something else that he's not saying. <laughs> I'm uh, driving, so I, it's dictated. But you're in charge you of the Do you say dot, dot, dot? No, you say ellipses. Oh. And then, but you say also uh, dictated, not proofread. Sometimes. I had yeah. to do that the, the day when I was sending something to my friend Sean, who spells his name S-H-A-U-N. That's And I dictated, hey, Sean, blah, 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 blah. Then I, when I parked my car, I looked at it, it had an S-E-A-N, and it should know that it's, because it's, I said, you know, hey, Siri, well, I can't say it out loud. Oh, now it's doing it. Wait a minute. Hang on. <laughs> hey, Siri, order that canoe from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Siri. <laughs> don't ask if I really want to do it. I don't want it to DTF Sean. <laughs> Who's Sean? 
Oh, he's his buddy. He's got in oh. his pocket for the Indy 500. Oh, yeah. He's well, like the guy. Oh, he's he's, he's the guy. On the list of Tom's friends. Yeah, yeah. let's review the list yeah. so far. Just the top five. <laughs> Is he in the top five only Sean for the May. month of May? <laughs> you got you got PJ. Uh, who am I? Duke. Haywood. Mark Haywood. Mark. 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 Christy, yeah, that is interesting that he also has seasonal friends. Yes. Yeah. He has yeah. Absolutely. Friends. John is amazing. He's like, oh, gosh, it's fall time. I got to give whoever a call. Right. I got Ed, my ski friend. Okay, Ed's your ski friend. Yeah. That's good. Also, he's, in the, also his, he's also in the uh, Venn, Venn diagram uh, doctor friends. Nice. Handy to have. Um, you know, you one time, <laughs> you said to me at a party, we were all at a party. I don't know what the hell it was for, but you walked up to me, and I was surprised. He walked up to me. Uh, how you doing? You know, one of those. Mm -hmm. And you actually looked at me, and I started to tell you something, <laughs> and you go... Are there any doctors here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was obviously looking for someone better to talk always. to. Always. He always is. Sorry. A, a doc, <laughs> Just trying you, to upgrade. And you, <laughs> you, ideally a doctor or an airline pilot or a pilot. Someone I interesting. I was in. Someone interesting. Uh, not that you're not interesting. In fact. Uh, dear gang, last night I was going to bed early. This has really caught the, the nation's imagination. What Tom, you got? And the way you talk. Tom, uh, speak. Last night I'm going to bed early while my, li my wife was going to stay up later. She asked me... Have you seen the Turner Downer? <laughs> Makes perfect sense. I said, the TV remote? She said, I know, I sound like Tom. Sorry. <laughs> the Turner Downer. That's from Greg. The Turner see, Downer, channel changer, clicker. Yeah. Clicker? I like clicker. clicker. I like the TV thing. There are just times you, uh, your mind is running quickly and you can't think of the words. You have to improvise. You kids don't remember when it actually was a clicker. Remember that? Heavy it click. And it would be like... Yeah. yeah. The first one we had... It was uh, essentially a whistle. You would press the button, and it would shoot air into a what? thing. Yeah, a, a tube. A little tube that would make yep. a, I'm not kidding, it would make a sound. What? And it, and it would it, a real high a, frequency, it but it was a literally yeah. a physical, like a, right. what's the, a, like a bellows. Do you remember Whoa, you know, the bellows, never... things you use with a fireplace? Yeah. How about that? It was like, a, and you'd press it, and you'd hear this, pss, and it would... Go through like a metal thing and you make... are rich. I wonder. No, when... no, this was the very primitive remote control. Yeah, I wonder when the first uh, electronic remote control was probably introduced. mid sixties. I would yeah. guess. Uh, now, um, uh, coming up in sports. Yes, coming up in sports, we got to NBA action. The finals start tomorrow night between uh, Heat and those uh, other guys. We're cheering for the Heat here. Yeah, baby. You're damn right we are. Yeah. And we are letting it ride. Let yeah. it ride. Baby. I can cash out for seven hundred right. Right now, pure profit, but I'm letting it ride. Question. Question. Tomorrow night, game one, Denver. It's a mile-high city. Mm -hmm. Let's say the Nuggets win by 22. Okay, you're asking what if I do? What do you do? So is it before or after I'm done crying? Is it... <laughs> I don't want to get into that. Because you, start, uh, you started with 40 bucks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it ride no matter what. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm saying heat, steal one, and if it gets over 2,000 cash out, I'll cash out, but for now, I'm letting it ride, sister. Okay, all right. So, But you do have a plan, 2,000 is what, it, kind of a mental note. Yeah, the thing is, that I just lack, fell out. I, I lack integrity, so we'll see what happens. Um, it gets coming up in the news, so... We have a story about one of those homemade airplanes. <laughs> Never a good idea. Yeah, I, You're dead set against those, aren't you? I, 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 I like to have uh, my airplanes that I'd ride in store-bought, if you will. Uh, we'll c have an interesting story about one of those, um, and uh, among many other fine things in the news. But uh, right now, I wanted to, uh, I'll start this by saying um, my uh, Raycon earbuds, I lost my, my charger cord. Oh, Tom. I got a new one. I, okay, I got good. a new one two days later, but I had to wear the old ones that I had. Uh huh. The old, uh, the ones that came with the phone, right. and I realized, my God, these stink. They never link up. They can't, they start, they go off half the time in the middle of something. And you start jamming, they fall out of your ears. Yeah, exactly. The Raycons, they are absolutely the best, and they're half the price. Now you can read the actual announcement, but I'm Ray giving my endorsement. Ray Raycon wireless earbuds. Their mission to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg and part of another leg to have quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. With Raycon, you get a pair and a spare if you want and still pay less than you would with some of those other big name tech brands out there. They may or may not be all white that fall out of your ears. Raycon knows that in this economy, every purchase pretty much has to be perfect. And Raycon offers buy now, pay later options. They have an easy peasy, lemon squeezy, free return guarantee. And they offer free domestic shipping and flat fee international shipping. And they also have 
over 50,000 five-star reviews, and it has to be more than that by now. And I haven't even told you about Raycon's eight hours of playback, crystal clear call quality, and water and sweat resistant. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today. And in addition to the great price, the already low price, get 15% off your Raycon order. Buy a pair as a gift and keep a pair for yourself. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Uh, also coming up, high school for sale. How would you like to buy a high school? No, thanks. Not that expensive. I think... Uh, Comes like with a gym. A production company, a movie uh, company would buy a high school. You think so? They're, yeah. just, they're trying to sell it as a uh, as a family home. Hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, that'd be really? Good. Oh, that'd be awesome. Finish your dinner, I'll stuff you in a locker. <laughs> <laughs> also, right. the, the no-wash clothing movement is taking off. I... Pass. No washing? Uh, uh, no washing. Oh, come on. It's all coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Daddy worked to feed us kids. Nobody worked harder than Daddy did in an old chicken house that was dusty and scalded and hot. And then the state came along and busted Daddy on 600 pounds of pot. <laughs> <laughs> and Mama cooked in the kitchen. Lord, I can still smell the chicken. She was active in her church and kept our torn britches stitched. And then the steak came along, and it turns out Mama was a satanic voodoo witch. <laughs> Crazy people raising babies around Rottweilers with rabies. Sometimes folks you thought were wholesome wind up doing time in Folsom. With sister really teaching scripture at the Sunday school. They're swapping naked pictures with a heroin mule. <laughs> Was she cutting up collards and boiling corn? Or making a million dollars in computer porn? <laughs> Daddy worked. <laughs> Still selling grass, Mama jerked. A knot in sister's ass. <laughs> <laughs> we all did the best we could. Which wasn't very good. And it kind of fades out there. Uh, does it fade out? <laughs> Comedy duo of Abbott and Costello are well known for their classic routine, Who's On First? Mm -hmm. But this, too, is hopelessly out of date. Here's my version with the help of uh, Mr. Dean Metcalf. Okay. Hey, Abbott! I'm the new team doctor. You being the manager, you got to tell me what drugs the different players are taking. Uh, certainly. Well, uh, who's on roids? What's on cocaine? I don't know's on meth. That's what I want to find out. I say who's on roids, what's on cocaine, and I don't know who's on meth. Are you the manager? <laughs> yes. Well, then who's on roids? Who? I mean the fella's name. Who? The guy on roids. Who? <laughs> what is the name of the guy on roids? <laughs> what is on cocaine? <laughs> no, I don't know what's on cocaine. <laughs> no, he's on meth. <sighs> <laughs> Look, do you know who's on roids? I'm telling you, who? The fellow on roids. Who? What is the name of the guy on roids? <laughs> what is on cocaine? I don't know. He's, He's on meth! <laughs> <laughs> there I go, back on meth again. All right, now calm down, calm okay. down. Listen, who comes up to me, mm -hmm. tells me he wants me to shoot him in the ass? Mm -hmm. I take the syringe, fill it with roids. Mm -hmm. I shoot who in the ass? There you go. That's the first right thing you've said all day. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you know the players? Forget the players. I need some heroin. What did you say? <laughs> I need some heroin. <laughs> That's our shortstop. Why I want <laughs> MC. 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 Paul Mercurio. <laughs> Do you wear a thong, Miss Pat? Is you out your damn mind? 
I have the hard time wiping it. What am I put a string back there for? Oh, God. <laughs> you know what I did just discover? I just discovered the moisture wipes. I had the diaper wipes for grown people. Of course, I used the wipes. Oh, yeah, they're oh. incredible. It's like oh. a shower in the middle of the day. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're, they're so much easier. Because you know how when you wipe it and the tissue gets stuck? Oh, None yeah. of that. None Everything of that. is smooth. What the hell? Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about wet wipes. We're talking about wet wipes. You use wet wipes? On the baby's ass. I'm an adult. I'm sorry. <laughs> you should get them for the adults. They're great, Tom. I just discovered them. They're great for fat people. You're getting a text. <laughs> well, anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh-uh, I'm going home. I'm going to Goodwill. Okay. To shop All right. Stop listening at the Goodwill. I'm out. I'm out. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Yes. So, <laughs> I don't know. Fascinating. I, well, I don't know what he was doing in the 40s, but uh, let's just... Uh, <laughs> waltzing. Other... Let's hope. Oh, uh, yeah. Even waltzing. Uh, yeah. Other things. Now, now, walking. This is an interesting topic. I'm walking. New Zealand's national airline is asking passengers to oh, yeah. weigh in. Mm-hmm. There. Well, now, this was a problem with Buddy Holly and uh, yeah. that big bopper. That horrible Maybe plane crash. If the big bopper had been more of a little bopper, they'd still well, be around. Yeah. I, if he had said he weighed more than 115. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not going to ask you. You're going to have to get on a scale. They have no visible They put display. you on a scale? They, they say there's no visible display to anyone there. Oh, okay. And not even the, the people that work for the airline will know what you weigh. Are they charging by the pound? No, they just want to make sure they have the right weight balance when yeah. you fly. It's international flights. I don't see any see problem with that. Yeah, apparently they're, I guess is it kind of like a sailboat where you want to have the weight distributed evenly? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Why are they just now starting this though? That's a very good question. Hmm. Um, it's, they're going to weigh the 10,000 passengers during a month-long survey. Let's see if it works. Oh, it's just a survey. Mm -hmm. It's not about balance. No, but better know the weight and balance of their planes for the pilots before they take off, so they huh. know. I wonder if they're going to ask people ahead of time what their weight is and see if people lie. Oh. So that's what they should do is they should have up contests. Step right up. Yeah. <laughs> people, people, people who get the closest to their actual weight <laughs> get a free weight. ticket to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> I have a favorite TV show in New Zealand. It's called The Broken Wood Mysteries. Yes. I love that show. Hmm. And one of my favorite people is Who from broke this wood? New Zealand. <laughs> is that what it is? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, Willie, you can back me up with uh, Taika, Taika Waititi. I love him. I'm yeah. sorry. He's, Taika Waititi, uh, he produced the Flight oh, of the yeah. Concord stuff. He you did Thor Ragnarok. Is. Folks love he, him. Uh, he did uh, What We Do in the Shadows, the movie, and he's got, uh -huh. got a little something to do with the TV show as well. He's so very It's, it's pronounced Waititi. Waititi. I go Waititi. Oh, okay. Oh. Well. Either. Like Either the guys or. from Star Wars? YTT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he also directed one of those new Star Wars. Uh, well, now, uh, so He's the, everywhere. The question He's is, from New Zealand. It's it's about this thing about weighing, uh, and I think Christie's experienced this. I, I forget, what There's some airport in the Caribbean. It's, is it uh, that I Dutch I thought Nassau island? was like that. No, I think it's that Dutch, half Dutch, half French. St. Martin. St. Martin. Martin. Is that the one where they... I've never been to St. Well, there's Martin. There's one where they take off. That's it. And the th there's a mountain right there. Yep. Oh, yeah. So hmm. they they have to have a, an exact weight or something, and some, I forget how it works. But well, you'd have to have the weight in the back. Yeah. That's a scary takeoff. And, and that was a, that was a topic that was uh, taken up by uh, uh, a great comedian from the south. And I thought we'd hear a little bit about this. <laughs> this is this is kind of about flying. You'll you'll see. And the airlines they tell you all this psychological stuff to make you feel safe. Like every time you get the plane, they talk about the flotation seat. And they explain it to you. Like, if you go down, in, if you crash in the ocean, then the seat will float. Two planes out of 100 go overseas. 98 out of 100 stay right here. So if you want to make me happy, you show me a seat that's going to bounce out of a cornfield. <laughs> that's what I like. This is what I like. <laughs> Confused. <laughs> James Gregory is our guest. He's not a flyer, apparently. Uh, apparently uh, not. Uh, that's that's nice, James. But we'll I was going to say something too about the day that I realized how dangerous air travel can be. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I went to the uh, Bahamas. If you've ever been there, you can sure. relate to this. Sure. They have these little small planes. They call it. They call it island hopping. You know, from one island to the next. Sure. And we call them puddle jumpers. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they only seat oh ten twelve people. They got one propeller. They look like crop dusters. They really do, and I, and a guy, and they have to know the weight of everything that goes on board the aircraft before the plane can take off. And I had never been through that before. And a guy came up to me with a clipboard in his hand. He said, "Sir, how much do you weigh?" I said, "Why do you need to know?" <laughs> he said, "So we'll know how much fuel to put in." I said, "Fill it up." <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy. Fill, I weigh six hundred pounds. <laughs> fill it up. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, listen. I'll buy. Yeah. Would you hate to die in a plane crash because some fat woman lied about the weight? <laughs> and you know they'll do it. Like, well, I just soon be dead to tell him how much I weigh. You know? <laughs> and it's probably going to be, it's, you want to be, it's probably one of those big 400 pound women in those tight polyester pants. <laughs> Why do they wear that? Why do they wear that? <laughs> I mean, I know they're fat, but they're not black.
line? <laughs> I mean, is it possible, is it conceivable that a woman over 400 pounds can put on a pair of tight polyester pants, look in the mirror and go, all right. I mean, Perfect. So, oh, oh, God, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me, uh, related to that subject, you know when kids are three or four years old, mm -hmm. you know, they can be brutally honest because they're old enough to talk, but they don't know about manners yet, right. necessarily. Sure. Mm -hmm. When my nephew was three years old, he and I were at a supermarket in Atlanta, Georgia on a Sunday afternoon. And in the store that day was the biggest woman I had ever seen in my life. I mean, it might have been 600 pounds. I don't know. I know that it looked like a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and she had all these tight, tight polyester pants. Uh -huh. you, know? you know, little irrigation ditches, you know. Yeah. Tight, tight, tight. <laughs> Camel toe. And she was and she was wearing she was wearing a beeper. And my nephew said, Look at that fat woman. I said, Shut up. He said, Boy, she's fat. I said, Shut up. Well, thank goodness the lady disappeared up the next aisle. A few moments later, we started up that aisle, and at that split second, her beeper went off. Uh -huh. And my nephew said, look out, Uncle James, she's backing up. <laughs> James Gregory. Uh, James Gregory, comedian. He's going to be at Stand Up Live, Huntsville, Alabama, coming up uh, starting June 9th. Then he's got a bunch of great dates in the South. Calhoun, Georgia. Uh, Watkinsville, Georgia, Henderson, Tennessee, Mr. James Gregory, live and in person. That's a tribute to the story about New Zealand weighing their passengers as they get on board the planes as part of a special survey huh. to distribute the weight properly. Kind of an interesting, interesting thing. But we now turn to the sports page with Chick McGee. NBA playoffs, uh, the finals start tomorrow night, and uh, apparently, uh, yeah, Denver gets to stay home. If the Celtics had won, uh, it would have been uh, game one in Boston, but no. Denver turns out the NBA Finals are starting in the Mile High City tomorrow night. And Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Playoffs, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Buckets, uh, the title series matchup, the Miami Heat champions of the Eastern Conference, the on only the number eight seed uh, will take on the Western Conference champ. Never happened before. Eight seed, number eight seed, kids, and the Western Conference champion Nuggets in the NBA Finals. The series starts tomorrow night. Uh, and, of course, the Heat dispatched Boston on Monday night. And the Stanley Cup final between Vegas and Florida will end with a first-time NHL champion. Uh, Stanley will be getting a new home. The Stanley Cup final between the Vegas Golden Knights and Florida Panthers pits teams against each other who have never won an NHL championship. It's the first time that's happened since 2008. Vegas made it in their inaugural season. They lost to the Washington Capitals. Uh, however, NHL are kind of worried. Ratings, they're thinking, are going to be um, mediocre, mm -hmm. huh. I guess. Are they attributing that to... Uh, not really. Uh, just two unfamiliar yeah. teams. No, no one like uh, an original six or right. so, someone like that. They so. shouldn't be playing hockey in however, place, places where the average temperature is not is that right? 20 degrees. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, they play indoors. For I the know, most part. But it's sure, just, sure. For I, it's just, I, you know, it sh should be the Canadians versus the Red Wings. And you know, Vegas. Well, they should be better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vegas <laughs> has been in existence six years, and they've been in the Stanley Cup Finals two years. Wow. So by my math, that's a third of the time they've been up for the championship. It's too hot there. It's too hot for Florida. <laughs> but that's dry your heat. problem. It's why do you get mad about things? Remember last year when they did March Madness in Indiana and none of the Indiana teams made it because they didn't play very well right. that season. And right. he was mad that there weren't more Indiana teams. It, if you don't qualify, you don't get a play, man. That's the way it works. Play better. <laughs> I'm just saying it. You know, just. Oh, and here's something Can't interesting. We, it, it's, it, does everything have to be everywhere? Does the NFL have to be in Europe? Can't we just, you know, have something that's sort of local and regional? And mm, That's where you have to embrace the local and regional uh, things. Yes, that's right. They're out there. How's that? I, I don't know. Yeah, your farmers unless you want to, uh, unless you want to local... set me up in London and I could be your London correspondent, not Ohio, England. I, I, could watch I did, NFL though. When I was in L.A., the Kings were playing, the Oilers, and I met a young lady at the bar who flew from L.A., who flew from Edmonton to L.A. to watch the Oilers play because it was cheaper to fly to Los Angeles and buy a hockey ticket there than it would have been for her to buy a hockey ticket in Edmonton. Whoa. Isn't that nuts? That Sally. is nuts. Wow. And L.A. Is, has high prices for everything, right? That's not any hockey game. That's an L.A. hockey game. <laughs> and Tom, listen to me. I think you'll find this interesting, he said, hopefully. 
<laughs> the Denver Nuggets are the last of the four ABA teams that merged with the NBA to reach the finals. Hell yeah. Uh, fond memories of the defunct ABA, Dan Issel, David Thompson, Bobby Jones uh, helped guide the Nuggets to the 1976 ABA Finals. It was the last one before the league was absorbed by the NBA. Uh, many of the ABA concepts, though, are still impact the game today. Uh, how about the three-point shot and the slam dunk contest? Yes, Wilbur. That was, I was holding up a three. Like, I was definitely shooting the three. Oh, the three. Shooting the three. Oh, three. Yeah. three. Shoot mm -hmm. the three. There you go. Um, and by the way, um, speaking of the ABA... Um, Bob Nedelicki, NBA greatest friend of mine, and uh, he's hooked up with some guys, and they've developed something called the Dropping Dimes Foundation. And the NBA has uh, stepped up, by the way, and made donations. The, some of the guys that were in the ABA are uh, they're getting pretty old, and some of them don't have any money, and uh, they're not taking, they're not getting any of the benefits of the contemporary NBA, but they are now. But uh, there's also a, a charity out there, uh, and it's called the Dropping Dimes Foundation. We created some T-shirts. Uh, if you go to LA and Atlanta Sports, you can also buy the uh, those beautiful ABA basketballs. Yeah, yes, just in time for Father's Day. Yeah, this is a really cool gift. It's, it is a great they had, gift. They got the rights. It's uh, laying these. right over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got one. They're great. If, if you have, that's a perfect idea, Christy. If you know someone who's a big basketball fan, in honor of the ABA, these beautiful balls. It's, it's real simple to remember. Lana beautiful, Sports. beautiful balls. L A N A. It's a charity <laughs> thing. It's really great, and they're helping some of these uh, aging players that uh, did so much for the game of basketball. And there's a great book about it. And one of the funny scenes is when they're they're acquiring the ABA. I guess it was the guy from the Knicks is quoted as saying, "There's no effing way we're going to use your." Effin's stupid three-point shot. Huh. It merely changed the game forever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But a lot of fun. Well, that'll be cool. With a, if, if That's a nice little footnote that an AB, a former ABA team would uh, make it yeah. all the way. And uh, another ABA team, the Indiana Pacers, will have uh, news about the Pacers when we come back. And uh, <laughs> Did they tweet the news? They did tweet the news. That would be ironic, actually. you know. Why is that? Because it involves bird. Oh, okay. well, that uh, there goes that uh, <laughs> there goes that story. Oh, well. Yeah, right Larry, now Larry's back in the building. Uh, you know, what your, you know what your dad wants. I'll for just go get, go oh, sit in the car. Your home. dad wants for Father's Day. He doesn't want a turkey. He wants a steak. Yeah. That's right. Father's Day right around the corner. Get dad what he really wants: Omaha steaks, perfectly aged, always tender, guaranteed delicious. The Father's Day experts at Omaha Steaks. Well, they've made it easy to put a smile on the big guy's face this summer with hand-selected packages. Head over to omahasteaks.com. Use promo code BTS at checkout. Get thirty dollars off your qualifying order. Packages can include. Fork tender, bacon wrapped fillets mignon, other gourmet grillables. Those air chilled boneless chicken breasts are simply delicious. Ultra juicy burgers, jumbo franks, many more favorites. Whether he's your father, father in law, or a father figure, he's the guy who was always ready to step up when you needed him most. This Father's Day, show him the love with the only gift that's as unforgettable as he, the mouth-watering perfection of Omaha Steaks. Do not wait. Go to omahasteaks.com. Use code BTS at checkout. Get 30 bucks off an unforgettable gift guaranteed to make old pop's day. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that dads want steak. That's omahasteaks.com. Code BTS at checkout. Do not wait. Get it over with. And know that when your father receives these Omaha steaks, well, he may just want company. Mmm. So you're saying you could, eat, have a not, steak? you could eat them. That's yeah. right. Uh, that sounds like a good idea. Thank you very much, Josh. Um, uh, also, uh, coming up, we have uh, Seals in the news. Not the singer. Oh, uh, balancing yeah. balls on their nose? I love that. And we have a, a state yeah. asking people to not do their driver's license photos naked. Oh, it's coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show. This uh, we have time. Let's, let's get a song out of Mr. Yes. Mr. Hay. Yeah. Colin Hay is our guest. What do you feel like playing, Colin? Uh, something I know. Okay. Yes. Well, that'd be good. I know most of my songs. <laughs> this is an old song which I like. I'll just play it, eh? All How right. How about that? I can get to sleep. I think about the implications of diving in too deep. 
Possibly their complications Especially at night I worry over situations I know we'll be alright Perhaps it's just imagination Day after day It reappears Night after night My heart beats Shows the fear Ghosts appear and fade away Along between the sheets Only brings exasperation It's time to walk the streets Smell the desperation There's pretty lights And though there's little variation It nullifies the night From overkill Day after day reappears Night after night my heartbeat shows Essential Morning Radio, all day and all night. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7. Hello, 24/7. Americans. It's that time of year again. You received your tax forms in the mail, and now it's time to settle up with the IRS. <laughs> when it comes to tax preparation, well, listen to this. Honey, we got our tax forms. Are you going to try to do it yourself again this year? I don't know. It's such a pain in the butt. Taxes can be a pain in the butt. That's why you should let the specialists at Tax Preparation H Incorporated do your taxes for you. Tax Preparation H Incorporated relieves the pain often associated with filing your taxes. And Tax Preparation H Incorporated can reduce those piles of paperwork to one small form that you simply have to sign and file. Did you go to Tax Preparation H Incorporated? I sure did. Do we owe much? Yep. Oh, we really got reamed by the IRS. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it doesn't hurt as much thanks to Tax Preparation H Incorporated. <laughs> Tax Preparation H Incorporated. We're just itching to oh. do your return. <laughs> Tax Preparation H Incorporated. <laughs> <sighs> Hey, and if you want, we'll even tell Uncle Sam to shove it up his... 
<laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. Are, uh, are you a single guy? I used to be married, but I'm divorced now. Yeah, my marriage wasn't working out. I, I was driving down the road one day, and my wife ripped the rearview mirror out of the windshield and beat me in the head with it. <laughs> what? Why? You'd have thought nobody had ever made love to her sister. <laughs> <laughs> she was just as bad. Yeah. She she used to brag. I can count the number of men I've been to bed with on one hand, and then she'd do it too. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. <laughs> twenty, 20, 20. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's Morgan Freeman. Oh, hey, Morgan. 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 How y'all doing? Good. I'm fine. Thank you, back guy. Oh, nice. I understand you have someone there that was talking about men making noises during <laughs> sexual encounters. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. I understand you said you've never heard a man make a noise before. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, you've never been to Shawshank, Sonny. <laughs> now, in Shawshank Prison, is there a lot of, is there a lot of noise? Yeah. Oh, it's hard to sleep at night. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll bet. Andy Dufresne came to Shawshank Prison back in 1947. Uh-huh. And he had a nickname that he was known by. What was that? Oh, wait, 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 please stop. <laughs> <laughs> You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So <laughs> that's how you know you're too high. Hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Well, what else would you be doing with your time? Coming up. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Pat Godwin in the... Perform it. Yes, that's Pat. Hi, Pat. How are you? Unrecognizable. Uh, there's uh, Josh Arnold. Hey. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, and I have uh, an email. And here's Tom Griswold. Well, let's get to your email, sir. Dear Bob and Tom Show. Huh. huh. I can't express how much fun it was being at your Carb Day show in connection with the Indianapolis 500. Mm. Uh, last week, you were talking about how soft Willie Griswold's hands are. Very well moisturized. I got to meet Willie <laughs> at the Carb Day show. Yeah. He stuck out his hand quick uh, to, so I could give it a shake. It was kind of like touching my first boob. <laughs> oh. Wow. Very exciting, and his hands are very, very soft. Never worked a day in my life, Never guys. Come worked. on. Look at these things. <laughs> any, any father's dream. I uh, don't argue with that at all. Now, uh, before we move on, a couple quick things. I don't know why we got talking about the early days of the television remote control. Uh, however, uh, got this letter, and I don't remember this. Uh, apparently, there were some remote controls that were hardwired. Yeah, mechanical remote controls. Um, yeah. Uh, th this guy. Well, no, there there were uh, electronic wired. Yeah. 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 Uh, this guy, uh, um, Michael, writes um, When I was a kid, my parents bought a VCR mm -hmm. that was about the size of <laughs> carry on luggage. Yep. I had one. Yeah. Um, the remote was hardwired. My dad would make me sit and record Elvis movies, <laughs> hit pause when the commercials would come on, and yep. then. Uh, record when the movie restarted. Nice. Thank All you. you could do with the first VCRs was well, well Ace knows this. You oh, just you set the time. Has them. <laughs> yeah, you set the channel, and then you set the time, and then it starts. And, and mine didn't have a, a remote; it had a, a pause button. Hmm. Recorded. Wow. So I'd be watching TV and recording something, and then hit pause. Well, actually, yeah. watching them now, the coolest part would be watching the old commercials. Uh, and especially if they're Elvis movies. Yikes. Uh, stinks. Mm. Thanks for the letter, Trash Man Mike. Uh, coming up, we have a story about a, uh, a school that's going to be that's on the market uh, mm -hmm. to become a, somebody's regular house. Huh. Which would be incredibly cool. Can you imagine if your house had a basketball court? Um, and lockers. Got yeah. this uh, Cameron right. So <laughs> I, live in a small, I live in a small Kentucky town. An Amish family lives in our old elementary school. Oh, okay. Uh, it's really? kind of fun. What about oh. the cafeteria, though? Yeah, it makes dinner time a little complicated. Yeah, man. Who to Just sit one with? Family? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they make it? Who to sit with? <laughs> <laughs> you sit with the cool kids or mom and dad this right. week? Right. Yeah. Uh, it would be a problem. Now, hey, uh, Taylor Swift's uh, concert made its way to New, New York City in uh, Jer the Jersey area this past weekend. You guys know this. Mm -hmm. uh, Memorial Day weekend. A three-night stop there at MetLife Stadium where the Giants and Jets play. 
Did he say the Jets? That's right. It happened in attendance for two of Taylor's shows. New Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers. It who, cost him a third of his salary for next year. Who is, <laughs> yeah, he has to go, he's going to renegotiate. He uh, Instagrammed that he had an incredible time at the concerts. He took in uh, the show with his buddy, Miles Teller. Oh, Whoa, boy. How cool. He and Miles are very tight. Oh. <laughs> uh, Rogers recapped the weekend and claimed that Swift is a, quote, master entertainer and spectacular human. Also in the pictures, uh, Miles Teller and his wife, Kaylee, there's also a uh, video uh, of Aaron enjoying the show, kind of dancing back side to side. Incredible weekend at my new home, Aaron types, with some special friends, a bunch of new ones, and the legendary Taylor Swift, who absolutely rocked the house for three and a half hours each and every night. Whoa. She's truly a master entertainer and epic human. And Phoebe Bridgers was spectacular as well. I She's great. To listen to her. Uh, Mike Birbiglia was at that show, our good friend. And he's on, uh, isn't he on the video the, board? The new video, yeah. Mike like is that. in the yeah. video for uh, Antihero, I yep. believe. Uh, and, and Mike's really close friends with the guy from the band Fun. Who Jack co Antonoff. Who co-writes with uh, Taylor Swift. And those, though, that tour coming to Chicago and Cincinnati, and the tickets are 1000 bucks a piece. <laughs> and uh, Aaron said, all the hospitality from uh, the tour both nights, uh, thank you very much. And hopefully we can make MetLife that loud this year. Come check us out, Aaron said. And then there were comments on the picture. Look how happy that dude is. It must have been Green Bay. The Jets fans were lining up, complimenting Aaron on, his, on his attendance. Now, uh, Pat? Yeah? Um, I, I asked you earlier if uh, you were prepared for, uh, with... Uh, we had a sh an interesting news story yesterday about a guy that was uh, taken to the hospital with a can of deodorant lodged in his uh, rectal area. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how far deep it was in. I don't know which organ really housed it, but it had to be surgically removed. Don't you get to a point, though, when you're doing that, you go, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm backing up. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it. <laughs> right. I'm not, uh, we can't do this. We can't yeah. go any farther. I think at a certain point it starts sucking it in, and you have no... That's true. I yeah. don't think of it. It is a vacuum. Uh, but I found a couple stories, uh, Pat, about the, a similar thing. We have a guy uh, who was caught smuggling 12 gold bars uh, in his rectum. Um, 12? 12. It's too many. How much would they... Well, How do he walk? Aren't they like... Wouldn't that be heavy? Eight pounds I or something? I thought they were heavy, too. Boy. Yeah, I did, too. Uh, no, they're small. Was that the guy flying to New oh. Delhi? Oh, it so says, they're not... The 12 gold bars weighed 2.6 pounds. They were concealed in his rectum. Oh, okay. At the time, the, they were valued at $88,000. Uh... Now, the price of gold fluctuates. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they're ingots. In ingots? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ingot Stevens. Yes, Stevens ingots. a great little actress. Yeah, do you think the guy that uh, pulled him out said, he who smelt it, <laughs> dealt it... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is he smelt? Never mind. Smelt. Uh, we got a couple more cases. We got a guy at the uh, Sri Lanka airport. That's the one. A 45-year-old man had 904 grams of gold uh, concealed in his rectum. Wow. Valued at 100,000 rupees. Hmm. I love saying that. Rupees? Rupees. 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 You're hitting it kind of funny. Uh, yeah, the rupees. Rupee. That's, that's rupee. 100,000 rupees. That was unnecessary. You got a story about it? Oh, okay. A story? <laughs> a song. A song, yes. <laughs> Little Neil Young. I'm such a fool Trying to be a mule I just got busted with an ass full of gold <laughs> Must look suspicious Just being ambitious They went searching, found an ass full of gold <laughs> It was in a butt crack fold <laughs> Yeah, a butt crack fold <laughs> They did an x-ray, found an ass full of gold Their hands were mighty cold <laughs> Bag of gold is smelly, flying to New Delhi. I got arrested with an ass full of gold. How'd they detect them in my rectum? They went searching, found an ass full of gold. When will I be paroled? <laughs> They did an x-ray, found a ass full of gold. Their hands were mighty cold. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Ass full of 
Chaco. <risa> <laughs> the yeah. TSA uh, agent who uh, discovered it, by the way, uh, is now known as uh, Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Yeah, three stories right away popped up with the same theme. <laughs> Smuggling gold well. in the old keister. Wow. Um, so, uh, anyway, they uh, they got it out. It's not called a prison purse for nothing. Yeah. Uh, fart oh, knocks. Yeah. So, <laughs> fart knocks. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> when, when we come back uh, in the news, uh, breast milk, human breast milk. And more sports. Uh, no, I like my coffee black. Uh, that's well, what it's that's all about. It's about. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. We'll find out about that uh, coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888-262. At Christy, do you feel like doing a little uh, something, cool. something over there? Something, something like what? Well, I, we have a request uh, for uh, uh, Chris, Christy does a thing she does on, on occasion on stage with Henry Phillips. And oh, I see. They are going to be working together. Oh, I don't know. We're, we're going to use that as a tease the, uh, to get people to Wiley's on Saturday to no. see the big. Well, I mean, the big, big show. The well, big. That'd be duet. nice. But there are a lot of people who can't make didn't it. Didn't we? Show. Uh, didn't we hear a new version of the? Wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Then? Did you guys ever? Oh, yeah, uh, we, yeah, we did get that. that. Oh, cool. We played that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we? Can you do the original? Do you know? That's the more politically uh, correct yeah. version. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever guys tried this on the air here? Have we? Yeah, I think we have. I don't know. Um, gosh, Henry, it's been so long since I've seen you, and I just thought that would be great to kind of maybe sit here and talk about some things like the weather. Have you noticed how hot it's gotten? Oh, my God, and the humidity. She's talking again. I have again. some friends that have She's shown really up. really bugging me. She's talking again. The most ungodly it's so embarrassing. I look at my friend. I don't know what women are thinking. I think she's days. psycho because she's but talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. But, you know, at least make sure your surgeon gets your nipples in the right place. Because I hate it when they skew left. God, what is that all about? You would think. She's talking again. Oh I need a cigarette. Oh She's God. talking again. And here's the other I wish we never met. She's talking day. again. Oh God, She's like a TV set. You know, She's talking and talking and talking. I'm gonna go insane. something everybody. I'm in horrific so pain. Do that to yourself. And then I think she's on cocaine. Stars, your stomach looks like a bad Maybe I now. need some because she's talking and talking oh and talking, talking and talking. And I'll tell you what. If you I are don't that care baby, about a word time, you say. To, you already know. told that stupid Strapper story anyway. I'm going to get a 38 and blow myself away anymore? because you're talking. You look at yourself in the mirror and go, this is as good as I am ever going to look. Oh, my God. And to go out in public like that? What is she thinking? I was at a black tie. She's talking night, again. Had it's on really the bugging me. She's talking Her again. In a beautiful it's so embarrassing. I look at my friends. Unbelievably I low think she's dress. psycho because she's I talking and talking. Here and talking. we are trying to raise money for a charity and her breasts are hanging out. She's insane. talking again. Oh my God. She's 55 years old. Uh -oh. She's on, talking honey. again. What's your age? What are you trying to prove? She's talking we all again. know that once you start drinking, you're going to hit on your husband's best friend. And that is not she's a trap. She's talking again. Yeah, yeah right. See what you miss when you're gone for just a couple of months, hon? Wow. Christy okay. Lee, <laughs> along with uh, Henry Phillips, I heard something about nipples the wrong way yeah. and uh, Have breast you ever hanging seen out. That? Skewing the wrong way. Yeah. Sometimes they mm. put them back, they're not exactly okay, thank lined you. up. Yeah, it kind of mm. looked like Marty Feldman nipples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what they call it in the textbooks? I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Dick Mahogany <laughs> in his first starring role since Shaft's lethal weapon is astronaut Apollo Johnson. And when he's not orbiting the Earth, he's going around the world. <laughs> Apollo Johnson. He's not just an astronaut. He's a charter member of the 100,000 Mile High Club. And believe me, there's nothing weightless about Apollo 13 and a half. Oh, Apollo. Now I know why they call it the Johnson Space Center. He's Apollo Johnson. And not even the shuttle can hold all of his cargo. Look at that load. Apollo 13 and a half from Monumental Pictures. Rated PG-13. And a half. Oh, boy. Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over-the-road trucker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, of course. Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have comedian Eric Hunter here with us. Uh, Actually, just... I, I met a guy. You ever meet like a, a sweet old man and you, you know, kind of get to know him and talk to him and befriend him and, and then he suddenly passes away? And mm -hmm. it's just very sad, and that, that actually happened to me uh, last month, and oh, it, was, right? eh, it was hard to take. You know, he passed away right before he was supposed to do my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I couldn't believe it. That his, uh, bastard! I know. His son calls me up April 13th <laughs> and tells me I should probably come pick up all of my receipts, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, did he at least start? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry that, about your dad and everything, but, but geez, this really just... puts me in a bind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you think about somebody else for a second? I'm very unprofessional. Me, yes. me, me. I mean, wow. You know, gosh, I mean, was it sudden? You know, I hope it wasn't painful or anything, but, you know, did he say anything about a refund <laughs> or leave any <laughs> notes? <Anything>? Or... <laughs> I mean, how am I going to get my taxes done now? <laughs> that is sad. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Man. Man. On November 15th, 1864, Major General William Tecumseh Sherman began his famous march to the sea. Sherman led his troops from Atlanta, Georgia, to the ocean port of Savannah. As he was leaving, Sherman set the city on fire, gutting 40% of it. Atlanta wouldn't be burned this badly again until they gave their franchise tag to Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom 24 7 up. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. There's Christy Lee at the news desk. Well, hello, Chick McGee. Hello there. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. My man. <laughs> He's killing it today. Oh, There's hey. Josh Arnold. He's done Texter. One song. He's killing it. <laughs> I, my my mission today is to be extra nice to Pat Godwin. All right, fair enough. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning, Pat. I'm Good morning, Willie. Yes, here. Here's Tom. Hey, a little bit of a challenge right now. Oh, oh yeah? Uh, Mr. Nice Guy over there? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I'd like you to be extra nice to Ace Cosby because... Out of the question. Here he is with his joke of the day. What do you call uh, an ox with a large... Behind an ox with a big behind. Mm. I don't know, Ace. What a big butt ox. <laughs> big <laughs> butt ox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Write, write this down, Tom. That's one. <laughs> On this date, yeah. thirty-one May. You like it because it's, it's got silly butt ox and, and it's got butt. <laughs> I like it because it has beef in it, and yeah. you will too. Oh. Go to OmahaSteaks.com. Use code BTS at checkout. Get thirty dollars off an unforgettable gift guaranteed to make your dad's day omaha steaks because if there's one thing we know it's that dads want steak and if there's one thing ace knows it's comedy <laughs> oh, with ace a bad joke is rare because they're usually well done that's right yeah, you're, huh. you're welcome uh now uh we have a, you're welcome. a lot of cool things coming up yeah you guys know that i'm a, i'm brand loyal very, uh, especially I, when it comes ivory to soap. Uh, yeah, uh, Otis elevators. Otis elevators. <laughs> we have a uh, we have an elevator story coming up. Hmm. Oh, good. 
Uh, dear Numb Nuts. Oh, hi. Evidently, that doesn't mean Christy. Um, so, Tom, what's your problem? <laughs> you want outdoor hockey because it's cold. Hockey should be played in the cold, right? Is that your is that your beef, Tom? No, 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 no. You, that, Florida that. and Vegas shouldn't have teams. No, it's just that they're just kind of, I'm just tired of everything. There's too much of everything. I'm sick of everything being forced on us. Do we have to have the NFL in Europe? Nick Do we brings, have to have soccer? I'm just, you know, there was a time when there was regionalism in the world, and now, as Randy Newman sings, we're just going to make everything one big American town. <laughs> Nick brings up a good point, though. It's too warm in Vegas or Flo and Florida. No, that's not what I mean. No, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. Let him about read it. the letter. This is no fun. And indoor football, you don't like indoor. You don't like outdoor football because it's too cold. You want all the football indoors. Yeah, that, that's not the point. <laughs> make make up your mind. No, I, I understand what he's saying, but that's he's missing my larger point. Are you sure? Or you're just not befuddled, and you don't want to. No, no, no. I question I, I, like I, I, I'm just saying. It just seems weird. Speaking of football, standing a, a few feet from a golf green, Deshaun Watson. I call him Randy Watson. <laughs> Sexual chocolate. Made a pitch for DeAndre Hopkins to join him in Cleveland. The Browns quarterback said he, he has spoken to the newly released from the Cardinals Hopkins, his close friend and former, remember this, Houston Texans sure. teammate. Hell yeah. And he's encouraging the three-time All-Pro wide receiver to consider a reunion, I'd wish he'd do something else with his, with his hair, though. I don't know. That hey, hairstyle, Chick, it's crazy. I, I'm all for uh, guys wanting to play with their buddies and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Is, is this new or has this been going on in the league for decades and it's just um, now it's more publicized? Like, I, th I think it's a lot easier for the NFL players to more or less be able to play kind of, sort of, where they want to play because before it was absolutely impossible. And to say who they want to play with. And who they want to play with. And, yeah. Didn't Aaron Rodgers do this two years ago? He insisted to bring back a receiver. Well, he's done that with the Jets. He's mm -hmm. got, uh, what's his face? L Lizard? Mm -hmm. What's his name? Lazard. 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 <laughs> Lazard. 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 And when you got something Lazard. going, you, you know, yeah. you want to keep it going. But, well, yeah. Is that the atomic bomb guy? That uh, was that was uh, Leo Solar. Oh, sorry. Solar. The, yeah. Solar. The, the Lizard King is Jim Morrison. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm square. Here's a story just for Tom from Oyama, Japan. Eri Yoshida is a 31-year-old Japanese knuckleball pitcher with a sidearm delivery that she hopes might carry her to Major League Baseball in the United States. Wow. Yo, Shida. Good thing we didn't step in it. <laughs> she says Classic old joke. <laughs> smell it no smell it mm. taste 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 i know it's a really difficult challenge says ms yoshida but i have a dream in my heart that i really want to stand on a mound in the majors with my knuckleball even yoshida acknowledges that it is far-fetched but it's also very real she travels this week to play for two months in the empire league an independent baseball league in upstate new york Yoshida has pitched in games in Japan, the United States, and Canada against guys and girls, and apparently she has a crazy good knuckleball. I yeah. have no doubt. So there you go. Now, did, did you say she's also sidearm? Sidearm delivery with a That's knuckleball. Weird. Oh, yeah. I've got to see some video. That's cool. Remember uh, the knuckleball uh, experts, Phil Necro and uh, jo his brother Joe Necro. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim Bouton tried to get back into baseball with a knuckleball. A knuckleball, Christy, when you throw it, yeah. the idea is that the ball... Floats. Jumps around because Floats it's not spinning. It's not spinning. Yeah. I always wondered how the, uh, why is it called a knuckleball? Because you're holding it like it's this, like and then it. when you breathe, you release it. You actually don't, your knuckles don't uh, touch the ball, but uh, you're supposed to be able to f file your fingernails. That's very uh, important Whoa. to file your knuckleball. But it doesn't come at you fast. It just it just bounces around because of, like... Do a lot of people uh, use that pitch? Um... I don't think so. Not so much anymore. When I was a kid, Wilbur Wood for the White Sox was my favorite pitcher of all time. And he's He threw the knuckleball. I like the knuckleball. Do you? There's a guy in the Major League Baseball right now that throws it, and I can't remember. The the I forget his name, too, and it's yeah. incredible. The, the sidearm thing is weird. Ted Abernathy. The sidearm. Yeah, That's where it, you're yeah, throwing, yeah, you're, you're side one, yeah. submariner, oh, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Uh, more like a so I, I don't, literally pitch? This is, So this is a combination of both those things. Somebody send me who was the yeah, pitcher. Yeah, I've got to see it. Who was the pitcher for the Pirates who would throw Underarm, like underarm. Yes, with his armpit. He would throw the ball with his armpit. <laughs> Kent Tacolvi. Kent Tacolvi. That's it. Thank okay, you, Tom. Wow. If we're going to have uh, men and women playing the same professional sport, mm. oh, boy, I mean, besides like golf and stuff, uh, the baseball would probably be it. There's, I, not, there's not a ton of contact. 
I think I think aren't there a lot of high school kickers that are ladies? Oh yeah, I yeah. don't know if a lot. Okay, you know what? Well, that's that's completely fair too. I don't know a lot. Well, I can't but that does make sense. I don't know. I think we'll see it in our lifetime. Really? Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, whatever you say. And the, how, how about having a team in which um, you have to have you know like four ladies on the squad, whatever. No, make, like like some mix, softball mix, leagues mix are. Mix it up, yeah. Right. Call right. it call uh, Ed. Didn't they used to call that the Scotch doubles in bowling? Is that what that's called? Oh, really? Scotch, Scotch doubles. <laughs> okay. Scotch doubles or something. I think. I, I think you're correct. I, I think my I, parents bowled Scotch on a Scotch doubles. Scotch doubles. I have a friend that drinks so. Scotch doubles. <laughs> <laughs> Love a Scotch double at the airport. Mm. I remember as a kid on Saturday mornings yeah. after the cartoons, uh, they would have pin busters live. Oh. Yeah. Uh, bowling Alley in Columbus, Ohio, and Gene Fullen hosted uh, Pin Busters with uh, Sally Flowers, <laughs> and uh, they would have uh, uh, couples, couples from around Central Ohio would be on Pin Busters, and uh, yeah, oh, it was, and they Did called you... it the Scotch uh, Competition. Wasn't there a show called Bowling for Dollars? Yeah. Bowling yes. for Dollars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep, we had that too. Yeah, there was oh, yeah. there was one. Um, in Eastern Europe called Bowling for Food. Oh, Tommy. <laughs> is that? Boy, they really no, wanted it. No, they man. came to play. Is the band Bowling for Soup, is that a joke on that? Is that what that is? Uh, uh, it has to be. It, it, must, be. it must be. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Love those guys. And it was announced yesterday from the Indiana Pacers, they tweeted out that guess who's back in the building? Well, I'll give you a hint. It was on a tweet. That's right. Just one day after Bird's former team was dispatched by Larry Bird's former team, Miami Heat uh, did away with the Celtics. He is back in the building. The Pacers officially tweeted out a photo of Larry Legend uh, seated courtside watching practice. How cool. Um, he is emblazoned with uh, a Pacer logo, and he was watching practice. He's 66 years old. I didn't know he was that old. He's wearing a, want to know what he's wearing? What's he wearing? A uh, gray baseball cap, a yes. long sleeve <laughs> collared white shirt, blue huh? pants, white socks, and some snappy sneakers. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> How about that? He looks very, <laughs> does he have a shoe he deal? Looks very relaxed. Uh, I do not know. All birds, right? Wouldn't you think? <laughs> All <laughs> birds. That's yeah. not Larry? Hey now. They're made of wool. He, uh, <laughs> I'm a fan. He um, he used to have Converse. Yeah, back then it was all Converse. Before yeah. uh, before Michael and, and Nike yeah. got together. Wouldn't you think a legend, literally, Larry Legend, wouldn't you think he'd have a shoe deal now? I, I believe Converse was called, that shoe was called The Weapon. Remember that? Hell yeah. Magic had, he was on Converse, Larry was on Converse. They're never out of style. The I, I agree, I think Converse are great. I just saw I just saw some beautiful woman the other day at a restaurant walk by with a pair of funky Converse on. Oh, the real thick soles; those are really oh. big now. Can I can, <laughs> can, we can I talk to you as a, as a uh, as a fellow as a fellow guy trying to keep you out of trouble? Yeah, you realize you said a, a beautiful woman. <laughs> you might want to back <laughs> off just a little. Next, okay, you're not helping yourself. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Are you familiar with the term "Who was that bitch"? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> you might want to... I was just saying, I think the Converse okay. are cool and funky. They are cool. Yeah, that's uh, we'll Kurt Cobain we'll told we'll, us that. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to find out if Bert has a deal. Hmm. 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 If he does now, it might be some sort of orthotic. You know, I have a deal with Simply Safe. Did I tell you that? Oh, I, well, I know that you love them. I was way ahead on on the, on the curve with the Simply Safe Do It Yourself. Design it yourself, do it yourself, home security system. And vacation season is here. <laughs> and wouldn't you like to have peace of mind while you're out on vacation? You don't want to come home with a house that's been ransacked. Mm, never. No. Simply Safe Home Security. You design it yourself. You install it yourself if you'd like. If you'd like, and uh, your house, your home, your compound monitored around the clock by trained agents, ready to defend your home against break-ins, fires, and other threats. And Simply Safe also has their top-rated app. Stay connected from any beach that you're laying on. My office for the day, but I'm checked in at my compound with my Simply Safe app. You can check your cameras, you can arm and disarm your system remotely. And Simply Safe, by the way, ships right to your door. And it's easy to, to set it up yourself. I have done it. That's how easy it is. It took about 30 minutes. However, if you feel more comfortable, Simply Safe certified technicians are available. To install it for you. And with financing through a firm, secure your home today and just pay installments over time that fit your budget. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. Go to simplysafetom.com and we have a deal for you. 
Go now and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe, especially on vacation, like Simply Safe. Thank you very much, Simply Safe. Uh, coming up, we have um, seals in the news. Arr, arr. Uh, we have uh, um, build your own airplane <laughs> carefully in the news. Don't you think seals are slimy? Oh, they look slimy, they don't they? Be. They're slippery. They slimy. are slippery. They're they got to be. Slippery little slimy. Slimy. Yeah. Hard to grab. Is that a lot of mucus, or are they just wet? They're greased up. Yeah. I they like they got to get through the water. Yeah, yeah. Like they're sleek. Yes, they're yeah. sleek. They look like Labrador retrievers, so I like them. I yeah. like seals too. Of course, I can't, do too. They can't sure. play shake real well, like that fin thing. No, oh, well, yeah. well, they can though. I mean, yeah, you know, that with seals coming up and turkeys, <laughs> seals and turkeys and whores. Oh, oh my. my! Wait a minute. Oh. Uh, uh, this is the Bob and Tom show. Hi, this is Kostaki Economopoulos, and you are listening. had a wonderful morning because we have a terrific guest in the studio He's sitting next to christy lee it's a, a veteran of uh, many years with a guitar a guy who they're gonna say bottle <laughs> <laughs> I can't, uh, pat i try uh -huh. well this is why i get the on. reputation of being uh -huh. the dick in the show but no uh -huh. i'm trying to do no, something no, no, nice no no no, no, no you are the, the dick, dick on the show oh, oh yeah <laughs> Who um, put the dick on the show? Uh, <laughs> and blamed it all on oh, me. Uh, See, this, this is, I'm, I'm not going to say anything until I'm introduced. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, Pat, Pat Daly. Daly is here with us. Thank Pat. you. Good Thank morning, you. everybody. Hi, nice uh, to Pat. see you. Hi, Pat. No, no Pat. Frank, good to see you. You do an annual residency, if you will, at Sloppy Joe's. Uh, the that's the place that does the famous Hemingway lookalike contest every year. Yeah, yeah. and you, you you could actually, and you win every year. You don't could you? certainly <laughs> place in that. Uh, They've been after me for a lot of years to do that. And now I say I'm too old. He shot himself last year. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Let me play a song for you. Okay, please. Ohio is having a blizzard. Missouri is having a flood. Oh, I can't read the paper. It's too small. Uh, it must be the martinis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you Where's like, that music stand? Would you like yeah. chicks Okay, readers? here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you want my cheaters? Okay, let me start over. Okay. Ohio is having a blizzard. Missouri is having a flood. Most of the South having a drought and Malibu's having a slide in the mud San Francisco is having an earthquake they say she won't last through the year the whole country is reeling in recession and I'm having one more beer <laughs> oh I'm having one more right. cold one until the news and the blues Disappear. The world's on the brink. But there's time for a drink, and I'm having one more beer. Oh, okay. yeah. Wait. My sister is having a breakdown. My son is having a toke. My dad is having his old emphysema. And I feel like having a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy is having a sexual crisis. He's smiling at me kind of queer. Uh -oh. <laughs> My secretary is having her pregnancy test. And I'm having one more beer. I'm having one more cold one. Fill it all the wall and disappears my wife's having fits in and cats having kits in and i'm having <laughs> one more beer my daughter is having her nose pierced my mom is having her butt tattoo <laughs> my brother is having an affair with my wife uh oh Guess who's the one getting screwed? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're having heart palpitations <laughs> about the way things are heading around here, just give that waitress a pat and 
tell her that. I'm having one more beer. Yeah. Oh, geez, I'm going to have to practice that <laughs> Oh, I love that song. I couldn't read my words. That's I, all right. I don't know why. Sure, yeah. i got to get them up this close now. Stick around. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Go <laughs> Skins. Yeah. This is what the show is going to be like tonight. Uh, wow. <laughs> Look out. I could never figure this out. They're telling me it's a crime for me to forget to fasten my own seatbelt. Mm -hmm. And yet every other block, we got a fast food drive through restaurant with some idiot pulling out with a 16-ounce Coke squeezed in between his legs, <laughs> a Big Mac sandwich in his fingertips, <laughs> steering with his wrist, an order of fries wedged between this leg and the console, <laughs> eating, drinking, slurping, steering with the other knee, and that's perfectly okay if this guy buckles up. <laughs> <laughs> and until you see a man pour a piping hot cup of coffee in his crotch at 40 miles an hour, <laughs> you have no idea the maneuverability of an automobile. <laughs> Don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah, can't go anymore. Holy That's cow. That's a good day's work, everybody. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Pat Godwin is in the performance room. There's Josh Arnold. Ace Cosby's here. <laughs> There's <laughs> Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, covering for my friends, and here's Tom. You, you are very yeah. good. Pat Godwin and I were just Tom. chatting away. And then we're <laughs> <laughs> well, we looked up and we saw Tom talking into the mic. Telling more stories, huh? Archie oh, Bunker. Yeah. We're doing Archie Bunker impressions. We, that is actually what we were doing. Archie Bunker impressions? Hey, yeah. little gilly, there. <laughs> <laughs> The Reverend Felcher. Felcher! <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. It's kind of an inside joke. <laughs> the Reverend Felcher. I don't think a lot of folks got that in the yeah. early 70s. Don't look up Felcher. I know I didn't. Yeah, you don't want to know what they were doing. Uh, coming up, we have uh, Christy Lee at the news desk. Also, it'll be sexy time with Allie Breen. We've never Fine. helped anyone. Uh, so we've helped help them with their with their <laughs> run. <laughs> laughs a lot. Uh, but uh, right now, we return to the sports pages uh, as uh, interpreted. By Chick McGee. Hey, you know what yesterday was? What? 100 days till the start of the 2023 NFL season. Wow. Are you Sorry as excited? I that missed that. Just ex <laughs> <laughs> really, what are we going to do with her? I don't know. We can do any more. 100 days. So you have a little calendar and you make X's so they yeah. can count it down? And every day yes. I get a little piece of chocolate. It's okay. very nice. Do they have a foot hook countdown <laughs> at that I'm calendar? Sure. Uh, <laughs> that's Probably. That's it. <laughs> the week before, it's all just shots of rum. Do you uh, remember when a, 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 a random kid would come in to school with like an NFL logo on a shirt and we lost our minds? Where did you get that? How did you get that? Really? Oh. Yeah, I don't remember that. Forget it. Yeah, you merch was not no. As prevalent as it is now. Now it's omni. It's did everywhere. you have to get yeah. it at the ballpark, so to speak, or I, at the football I, stadium? I or? don't even know if, if if he must have gotten it at the ball. Yeah. Yeah, because you didn't have the internet. Couldn't order it. And if you did order it, six, eight weeks to delivery and the school right. year's over. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Not like now, man. Mm. And well, then the halftime highlights was the only highlights we, we saw of our teams. And, or as, something you, else. as you mentioned earlier, it may be 100 days to the NFL, but there there is some NBA action happening. Coming up, uh, I do remember seeing merch in the uh, like Sears catalog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the Sears oh, uh, Christmas, yeah. and, and that would take six to eight weeks. Christmas yeah. wish book. Did you ever get that, Tom? Did you circle things for your mom and mom sure. and dad? Have Santa Claus. That thing Santa was Claus? thick. Yeah, it was. 
We look forward yeah, to it every we, year. We, we, we would circle things for Santa. <laughs> Tom does not remember. You don't. The bras, bras, bras. <laughs> oh, they would just add, we don't Ace was playing with himself looking at the bras and the wish <laughs> I think we all were, right? <laughs> I, didn't see that. I don't think so. And then you train yourself and then you accidentally do it when you're in a Sears. It's, it's real embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> like, blah, blah, blah. Did you not make a. You I had did, a list, sure. No, I don't, did you write a letter to Santa Claus, yes or no? Of course. Did you guys get catalogs at your house, or did they Absolutely. just bring everything over to you and show Dear it to Santa, you? <laughs> I don't think I need to uh, break you over the coals again about last year. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just move However, on. the good news is you can make up for it this year. Now, please, I'm writing these down specifically. Let's not get it wrong again. No, no more socks. No more. No so more sweaters. No more shirts. I hated getting clothes for Christmas. What did you want to get? <laughs> oh, yeah, kids did. You don't want to get it. Kids don't want no, Actually, don't. nowadays, I, I, there are kids that really love it. Mm -hmm. Once they have, like, 13, 14, get their own style. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give, give a six-year-old a pack of socks. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were going to say a pack of smokes. <laughs> That's probably what you got, right? At least you could sell those That's what school. they got Bender in Breakfast Club. Smoke up, Johnny. Yeah. Remember that? His dad had hit him and then give him oh, a oh, pack boy. of smokes for Christmas. Oh. Do you have a toy that sticks out in your mind or a Christmas gift from your father? I remember one, but only because it got taken away. Because we did something really bad. And my dad goes, Willie, you were going to get the Gibson Robot guitar. Not anymore. I'm giving it to a kid downtown. <laughs> he, he did that? He yelled it at me, yeah. Um, Coming to work one morning. Hmm. I'm sure it was so you well. You deserved it, I'm guessing. I don't recall the details. And that kid downtown was... Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Johnny Bonamassa. <laughs> uh, uh, I couldn't think of anybody. Do you have a toy that sticks out in here, like a Betsy Wetsy or an Easy Bake Oven? Or, uh... I had an Easy Bake Oven. You did? Oh, yeah. I made brownies all the time. It took three hours. <laughs> Cook a brownie with a light bulb. You tried it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you ever try making uh, pork tartare through the Easy Bake? No, never did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you try making pork oh, chops, yeah, right? And then you yeah. get turns into pork tartare. <laughs> Well, my greatest present was a turntable when I was oh, in fifth grade. All right. A little, you know, like record player, I guess you would play? call it. It wasn't a close and play, but very similar. Yeah, it was a big deal. Anything leap into mind over there, <clears throat> Professor? That uh, Christmas gift you got from your mom and dad? Um, I don't, like I said, my mom would always get a lot of clothes. From this. You can tell he didn't have a lot of good Christmas. Look at him. You ever yeah, get a pogo we... stick? Oh. Were those no. allowed in the Griswold household? No, I was a more of a stilts guy, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had a pair of rusty red metal stilts. What a weirdo. Did you really? Oh, yeah, and you could adjust how high you could go. Look <laughs> how excited he is now. And you could get him so high you had to get on a ladder Look to get out. Look how excited he is. And you would walk around that high? Oh, yeah, I love stilts. <laughs> oh, I, I was it. really good at I'm it. I'm surprised you aren't a drywall guy. Yeah. Well, they have the, they have the ones that have the built-in. Oh, the handles. Is there the any, best. any way you'd get on stilts today? I would know. Oh, I would no. be bad yeah. advice. You yeah. fell from up there. Yeah, the, the, the bones are a little more brittle. Yes. What about um, puppet? Did you get a puppet as a gift? Is oh, that you where did that? Get, you did get a puppet. Didn't you, you get Jerry puppet. Mahoney or yeah. something? And Knucklehead Smith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had lots of puppets. I was a big yeah. puppet guy. I got a Grover when I was like 11 or 12. Uh, no, we, he still has puppet. puppets. A Muppet. Yeah, it's us. Now. I know. It's us, us. and the puppets. They have right. full puppets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, we had a nice uh, poster made for a recent event, a uh, recent broadcast. And uh, we had it signed by the legendary A.J. Foyt. We're going to be putting that up for sale and give all the money to that great program, Homes for Our Troops. I'll give you some details on that coming up in a couple days. So if you're a big A.J. Foyt fan, you'll want to have that. Uh, there's a, there, it's truly a, a, a rarity, if you will, but it's got us as the puppets on the poster. It's kind of funny. Do you have the uh, Canadian National Anthem over there? Is it uh, easily uh, uh, easily available? Hang on a second. Uh, okay. A little warning would be Starts nice. Starts O Canada. Oh, <laughs> that's not uh, close enough. It is close. That's not. That's oh, here we go. This is the Canadian national okay. anthem. Here we go. <laughs> that is insulting to our Canada, brethren up north. <laughs> Hello. Sounds like an AI version. Yeah, it does. They're not human. <laughs> 
true patriot. Sounds like the, back, the background singers in the uh, 1960s Lawrence Welk show. <laughs> Rather soul free. A Canadian woman has won the famous cheese rolling race in the United Kingdom oh. despite being knocked unconscious during the event. Oh. Wow. It, 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 which is easy to have. It, uh, have it you seen this there. thing? It's dangerous. It Oops. was uh, featured in Spinal Tap, I believe, as kind of a joke, but evidently it's uh, this is a real deal. The annual race. Involves competitors chasing a seven-pound wheel of double Gloucester cheese <laughs> near uh, down the near vertical Cooper's Hill near Gloucester. What, where else is that near? Uh, Snatches Clef. That's right. Actually, yes. there's Cooper's. Don't think Cooper's you have to have a. A living will to participate in this? You do. <laughs> you know. This is so stupid. You know, when dangerous. I asked you about the stilts thing, of course not. But there was a time. I, I would have done this. I don't. But now it's like a, you could break your neck at any minute. Of course. Well, she ends Absolutely. up concussed and unconscious. Uh, the first racer to finish behind the yeah, fast rolling. Yeah, but she rolling. wins. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. Wins a, she wins a block of cheese. She gets the, the guys in the NFL get millions of dollars to enjoy their wheelchair and ramp in their old age. She gets the seven-pound <laughs> wheel of cheese, which is actually kind of looks like, it looked like a uh, large pizza. That, that's a seven-pound wheel of cheese. Wasn't that What big? do you do with that? Yeah, you cut it up. Well, you can eat it on it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Seven yeah. pounds of cheese. Boy. It's not going to fit in your refrigerator. You take it to some mice downtown. Okay, yeah. I found, <laughs> okay, I found, this, I found the updated, uh, excuse me, the, yes. the, the more upbeat version of the Canadian National. Oh, okay, good. Okay, here we go. Candida, not Canada. Oh, sorry, I misread That's the label. Yeah. Well, I got something for the cheese race. Would you would like to hear it? Sure. sure. If I get to win this race, <laughs> oh, if I hunt, smashing up my face, <laughs> oh, all I know is I hit my head, woke up in a bloody tent, and there in my arms was a big old hunk of cheese. I spin down right down for a seven pound hunk of cheese. <laughs> baby, right round, right round. I spin my head <laughs> round, <laughs> round, <laughs> round for a seven pound hunk of cheese. Right round. You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> like round, <laughs> round. <laughs> right round, baby. Right round. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird song. Delaney Irving is the Canadian, won the woman, women's race despite being knocked unconscious. She's 19 years old. She said, I just remember hitting my head, and now I have the cheese. All, All right. 28-year-old Matt Crawla from Manchester won the first of several men's races. Ah, have we seen what, Pat? The video. Ooh, she, oh. does, she does hit her head. She's out. The cheese hits her head? She hits her head. And oh. the cheese, and she ends up with the cheese. Oh, she hits her head not on the cheese, though. No, the and they're, they're running downhill. Is yeah, right? they're yeah. All well, and, a real steep hill. And th it's this is the correct uh, ex a near vertical Cooper's Hill. Yeah, exactly. The video yes. does not do it justice how downhill it is. Are people running or kind of just rolling? Oh, both? well, yeah, it's hard to. It's, I don't think anybody makes it down the hill. Standing, standing up, up. It's, it's it's like a choreographed fall maybe they eventually give into the gravity yeah you, know, you can flip or you can try to stop yourself from falling i guess but you know how hard that is tom falling down a hill you just I can't don't yes, do I, that i'm a skier i've done it many times we used to do that for fun we go hey you want to go to the hill and roll down it oh, oh yeah, yeah. Hours, <laughs> down a hill. hours of fun. Itchy. We get itchy. Mm -hmm. I see. I you see. know what I wanted to do, but I wouldn't do it now, but I I, th I was intrigued by it. Uh, where you put yourself in the middle of a tractor tire. A big oh, one yeah. Big tires and roll down like that. It's got it. You've got to be so Ooh. sick. Afterwards. Yeah. Oh, God. So just vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Vomiting everywhere. <laughs> I was uh, in, well, uh, Christy was with me. We were in that NASCAR simulator. Yeah. Remember that? I, it, was, it was just sitting still. It was a simulator. You were driving in NASCAR. Made me so sick. I, I don't know if I, oh. did I say I was sorry for vomiting on you? That's oh, right. boy. Okay. Okay. We have a, uh, uh, since you're talking about cheese. Yes. Uh, we have a, a very short version of uh, one of the cheese classics. <laughs> Uh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, one of those yeah. classic cheese songs. This is the 17 second version. Who cut the cheese? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Who cut the cheese? Embarrassing. Who cut the cheese? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, who cut the cheese? Oh, really? 
Exactly. It totally makes up for it. Hey, hey, who got the that cheese? cheese? Yeah. Smooth Teddy B and TG Mofo <laughs> MC. Look at him. Uh, and who cut the cheese? Would you like to hear the soul's whole song? I no. Can, no. I'm, make no. It. I'm good. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, and uh, this past uh, Memorial Day weekend, of course, it was the Indianapolis uh, 500, but they're always a buzz in the air when it's uh, race day. Uh, but uh, apparently there was a problem with a swarm of bees yeah. as the field of 33 was by at the start-finish line. They were not there to sting anybody. <laughs> I don't know if they asked the bees what their purpose <laughs> was, but according to beekeeper and hardwood honey owner Ross Harding, who was there to corral the bees, I had no idea. I wasn't that surprised. But I've been called there before for a bee problem. They mm. had huge nests underneath one of the stands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. You got to get rid of that thing. There were two of them. But like, one bee flew out and said, hey, hey, hey. we're not here to sting anybody. Uh, no. We're not here to sting <laughs> anybody. going to watch the race. Yeah. That's right. We know a great race when we see one. Come in peace. Uh, Harding was summoned to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway yesterday to retrieve the honeybees. He says every spring a strong colony will cast a swarm. And that's what it's called. This is when the old queen, <laughs> Elton John. Uh, let me ask you, why don't you ask uh, Paul Lind a question? You know? uh, that's when the old queen who survived the winter leaves the hive and takes 60% of the colony with her. The bees typically relocate less than a mile from their previous hive, that's frequently it. landing in various places, including outside the media center, of course, at the speedway. Don't you love bees? <laughs> I do They're love so bees. so interesting. They help mm. us out a lot. They do a lot of work. And tonight, the Scripps uh, World Champion Spelling Bee starts. Oh, uh, God. Night in the morning. What channel's that on? Is? Spelling Bee. I on. <laughs> I on. I on. Whatever that Lord. is. Would you? <laughs> um, I on. Crap TV. <laughs> Crap TV in this line. Uh, he says, I grabbed, I grabbed the queen with my fingers, and I was trying Ooh. to put her into a cage, but she flew away. He's been a beekeeper. Unhand me. He's been a beekeeper for 12 years, but he, now, he kept um, at it. Let's go back a couple stories. I got this nice note. Um, you were talking about the um, young lady who was a very fine baseball pitcher who's hoping to make it into the majors. Yes. Mm -hmm. And apparently she throws a sidearm knuckleball. Yes, she does. And apparently she's very good. Ari Yoshida. Um, uh, Bob 30, Uker, 31 years old. The great Bob Euchre. Um, a former catcher was asked, uh, how do you catch a knuckleball? Oh, yeah. And he said, you wait until it stops rolling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I wanted to know if uh, Larry Bird is back in the news, the great Larry Bird, Larry Legend. And uh, they, they described his outfit sitting uh, on the side of a, at, a, the, at the Pacers practice. In the Indianapolis uh, Star, I believe, now, the I, newspaper. And yeah. I asked if Larry had a shoe deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't it be kind of cool for some of these classic, older, you know, aging ball players to have instead of just the young guys? Sure, especially since dad shoes are in style right now. Yeah, I mean, and uh, maybe Larry should have like a slipper deal. Oh, oh. Mm. there you, you know. go. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, uh, just, you know, I'm not sure what you'd call them, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, How about uh, Ness? Birds, oh, birds, yes. birds yes. nests. No, no. Yeah. Well, I say it out loud. It sounded good to my brain. Maybe all birds. Does all birds make a slipper? All birds does not make a slipper. The wool yeah. shoe people. What about the, the lair, Jordan? Is that clear enough? Lair, <laughs> short for Larry? Lair, Larry. Is that Larry. anything there? <laughs> I think Larry deserves his own shoe line. We'll give it some thought. Uh -huh. uh, Hats for, off to Larry. For the, for the, for the aging <laughs> basketball fan <laughs> that still loves Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. A world record coming up. Don't worry. It's on the way. And we have... That's um, my reaction as well. <laughs> we have a uh, headline, breast milk lattes. Mm -hmm. I've never had the urge to taste breast milk. Mm. Tom, your thoughts? Uh, I, I'm with you. On you this. haven't done it? No. I've heard it tastes like cantaloupe. No, it doesn't. Yeah, well, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Is hey, that's what let I me see what that honey do. Okay. Oh, okay. Knock, knock. with the melons. Who's knock. there? Uh, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe who? Cantaloupe. Someone stole the ladder. Is that from Humor in Uniform in Reader's Digest? Back 1957. <laughs> it may be time for a bonus Ace Cosby joke oh, of the day. Just, just Coming up, I this is the Bob and Tom myself. Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel.
One. Oh. Scoop. A big scoop. That's a huge scoop. Two. Two. That's not Two a big scoop. blender. Okay. Three. Hey, don't, Three. No, no. You, you're not going to run out of room. No, you're not. Enough, no, no. You're about half gallon. perfect. Uh -huh. There's milk right there. Milk and pour it about. Uh, you want to put a little whey protein in there? A little there? more than that. A little more than that. Oh, yeah, come, come on. on. There we go. Hey, a little more. All right, okay. that's good. Now load it with Oreos. Yeah. All right. right. We have so we have vanilla ice cream <laughs> in the blender, <laughs> not in your mouth. <laughs> don't eat the Oreos yet. All right. How many got there? I don't think I've had an Oreo in uh, years. That one and another stack. That is high. that an even number? Oh, for Did goodness Did you count them? Sake. How many got there? It's bad luck mm -hmm. to get a number Keep of Oreos. Going, it's bad luck, chick. Did you All count right, them? that's enough. No, it isn't. Keep going. Shut your hole. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> this is our shake. You're not going to be able to drink it. You're yeah. going to have to eat it with a spoon. That's fine. Put more milk what in is it. that? Fifteen Oreos? Oh, this is. Uh, it's going to be perfect. It'll go right up to the top. <laughs> Peanutopolis. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> All right. Put a Klondike bar there. Come on. Throw let's in go. the Klondike what bar. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Mm -hmm. I'd kill some blood. <laughs> <laughs> Throw don't a little know. more milk in. Klondike Come bar's on. in there. Blah, 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 blah. All right. There we go. There you go. That's, That's right. good. Okay, there you go. Just okay. let it go. Oh Keep God, going. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's heaven. Look, look at, at that. The Snickers bar. Look at that. Snickers bar <laughs> looks like it's swirling around yeah. the bottom of a toilet bowl. Yeah. You're putting more ice cream in there? Yes. There you go. Now blend her up there. Oh, one more. Come on. <laughs> At least it's an even number. Okay, right there we're going. <laughs> are those the peanuts trying to... Uh, Thank you. Now, Bob, sip that over there by your microphone. Let's hear, uh, hear your I'll, I'll judgment I'll have a taste. On that. <laughs> Tom has to drink it. We though. should market this. Mm. Wow, it smells very good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That is very good. Mm. Tell me this is not good. That is very good. Very chocolatey. See? This is much better than your shit. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Why don't you throw some protein powder in that? So at least you get some protein. And why don't you run up an alley and shake. yell fish? Same topic. When they asked how much he weighed and he asked why, they said, well, we need to know how much fuel to put in the plane. And James Gregory said, fill it up. I'll buy. But he says it much funnier. And that's a look at things you may have missed. Fill it up. I'll buy. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of... Loads of curvy cleavage on display. <laughs> the thrill of victory. <laughs> and the agony of defeat. Don't touch those. Sorry. The human drama of... Loads of curvy cleavage on display. <laughs> this is... The Bob and Tom Show. No shoes, no shirt, no talent. Can you tell us about Hawaii? I get very confused over there. I'm always trying to read signs, you know, because they, they are. They, all they have are vowels. You know, you read signs, and some signs, you know, they have an arrow that says E-I-E-I-O. Yeah, <laughs> come on, you know, where is that going to go? And then, and <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, to a pineapple farm. Yeah, what is that? And, you know, they, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm always trying to, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to impress. I was with this girl, and I'm trying to impress her about how much I know about Hawaii. It's my second time there, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, uh, I go, oh, now look here. This is the ni i i i pu u lo o o k a u t, and she said, that's lookout, you idiot. I'm like, oh, well, I guess, I guess I'm a little used to. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna read these signs around here. I see. And they, and they Fascinating. Have, they have two 
two airports on the island of Maui, and one is called like Hilly Willy Pooly, and then they call the other one Willy Willy Polly, and then I go to the wrong one, and I'm the idiot. <laughs> You're supposed to be Hilly Willy Pooly, not Willy Willy Polly. They're going to be an hour and a half apart. They shouldn't sound exactly the same. <laughs> not Hilly Willy Pooly, Willy Willy Polly. Uh, you know, I, I, well, I have a theory, and uh, I think everything in Hawaii was named by Mel Tillis in a hurry. Is what happened. They just brought Mel over. Mel, what'd you call that? Okay, come on over here. Pipe, 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 pipe. Mel, what would you call that big, beautiful bird? Well, I, 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 yeah, that's good. That's the I, 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 I. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. That's awful. Awful entertaining. Essential morning radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24 7. Comedian Greg Warren, former uh, state champion wrestler. You're the son of a wrestling coach. Now, I assume your dad was also your wrestling coach. Is yes. that correct? Yes, he was. He was a high school wrestling coach, so I wrestled, and my mom was into music, so I played the clarinet in the band, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which uh, they made fun of me, especially the guys on the wrestling team, sure. especially my best friend, Huey Baker. He was, uh, he was a black guy. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys that would just get a hold of something and never shut <laughs> up. And like, Look at Greg, man. Greg played a flute. <laughs> it's, a, it's a clarinet. You, it's a flute, Greg. You a flute man. <laughs> Look at little flute man, Greg. Flute your flute, Greg. Little flute man, Greg. He'll be on the bus going to a match. He'll be real quiet, and all of a sudden you hear, Hop, two, three, four, what the hell are we fighting for? Flute man. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing when you're out there wrestling and you hear, Hit him with your flute, Greg. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Jimmy Pardo. You recognize my voice from the show and my face from television. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Christy Lee. Hey. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, chick. My man. There's Josh Arnold. Is anybody more foul-mouthed in the hallways in the green room than Christy Lee? No. Nope. Oh, I love the effort. <laughs> there, are some, well, there are some words she used. I had no idea they oh, existed. Oh. oh, no, I'm not that bad. Ooh. Make Andrew Dice Clay blush. Hickory dickory yeah. da. I work here. Christy what wrote do you that. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Also, uh, no, you do not curse. I've never heard you curse. Nope. nope. Sissy. <laughs> <laughs> There's Willie Griswold. Morning. Oh, he cusses. I'm Chick McGee, and of course I don't. And here's Tom. Oh, oh thank you very much. Uh, we have a. Oh, can you I'll grab, grab that? Hello, Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Bob and Tom, it's Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Donnie, how are you? Donald. Yeah, you guys can clear out this between me and Christy. Christy, I still can't believe you went and got married and hitched behind my back right to my face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure did. I'm talking about hitting a jackpot. Um, does the new Mr. Christy Lee know all his earnings and hedge funds get added to your child support payments for Whiffy and me? <laughs> <laughs> It ain't uh, just state law. That was passed by Nick Gingrich. It's federal now. Uh, <laughs> so you're expecting a raise. You know what I'll say, like this? If I knew child support paid this good, I'd have put twins in you. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't know what to get you guys for a wedding gift. I figured you guys were already probably registered at some ni nice upscale places like um, Montgomery Wards yeah. or that f fancy place you see at every fashion mall. Um, Restitution hardware. <laughs> <laughs> I want to surprise you, so Whippy and me went and got you guys a new air fryer on layway down at Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, well, thank you. That's very so sweet. We love ours. <laughs> we love it. Sure, it takes up 95% of our counter space. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you what, a ham and cheese hot pocket air fryer is going to change Thanksgiving for us. You, know? <laughs> you, you ain't eat this good since Flaky Jakes went under. So... Christy, have your man Andy run down to Bed Bath & Beyond for the out of business. Okay. Because rumor has it it's going to convert to a three-fingered Eddie's fireworks soon. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to sign for your gift. you got to get your gift off flavor. Oh, and make sure Andy don't forget his wallet. There's still a balance of two ninety nine on that bad boy. <laughs> Thank you. That's very and, uh, sweet By of the you. way, you better not try having a whiffy calling your new husband dad. I swear to God. <laughs> I'll say it right to his face. That'll probably put us back in court. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. Oh, going to call you me. new dad. Uh, Tom brought up the topic, uh, why doesn't, uh, Larry, it was announced yesterday, the Indiana Pacers have, um, they said Larry Bird is back in the building, meaning that he's uh, a consultant, if you will, back in sure. the, uh, basketball operations with the, uh, with the Pacers. And then Tom brought up the question, why doesn't Larry have a shoe deal? I said, does he? I don't know. Does he? And ergo, it wasn't too far from uh, why does, if not a shoe deal, how about a slipper deal? 
Well, uh, this gentleman uh, emailed, uh, they should call it the bird flipper. Oh. Flip, flip, bird. Flipping the bird? I don't think that's... Flipping, flipping oh, the, the flipper. Bird. I see. Yeah. Larry's loungers? Yeah. No? No good? None of these? Fine. I like Larry's loungers. Larry's Lounge. Maybe he could uh, open up a, uh, a restaurant. I mean, just, let's not be too judgmental here. People are doing the best they can with what they were given. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Just, just start out just asking. I mean, I, I, I think all the young... When you ask this, it's go, this stuff's going to happen. All, all, the, all the young studs playing basketball have their own shoe deal. Why not for the coaches and Give the... one of the older guys that yeah. do it? Yeah. I, I don't think that he wants it. I think he likes to stay kind of under the radar. He's a pretty private guy. Why I'm, not nationwide radio personalities have a shoe deal? Why? Yeah, why don't why you why have, don't one? have Why don't I? Would you, chicks, no, kicks? Wait a second. Would you? What would you do with the 500 other pairs of shoes you have that aren't of that brand? I'd wear them in, in private. Probably you can't. wouldn't be able to. Is that remember what remember there was some, who was it, some uh, famous football player that was associated with a certain beer and someone took a picture of him and a different beer was on there and they got all up on our Well, was, you remember the dream team. Michael uh, was, uh, of course, with Nike, but uh, the... Uh, Reebok. Reebok, and he, he said, I got a little something for Reebok when they took the picture. Uh, he wore the warm-ups, but put the American flag over the Reebok yeah. logo. I me if I remember correctly, Michael Jackson was doing Pepsi or uh, Diet mm -hmm. Pepsi. Some pop star, yeah. Yeah, he was, and uh, he accidentally had a Coke, and uh, boy, they set his head on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That really sent a message. Yeah. That's, so, that does send a message, uh, yeah. doesn't it? They did the same thing with Pryor. He was not supposed to be doing crack. That was the whole issue. <laughs> right, right. right. The pop syndicate said, hey, hey. <laughs> Very good. Okay, you ready? Yep. Stupid world Pop syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> All right, I want to tell you, what were we talking about? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> David Rush, the man, the Rush man, the Rusher, the Russian age. Rushington. Uh, Rush, the, the uh, power trio that is <laughs> David Rush. Rush. Mount Rushmore. He has broken the Guinness World Record for the fastest time to... Pay attention. Okay. Yeah, I'm listening. Wrap a person in newspaper with a team of eight people. Okay. Oh, so is there tape involved, I guess, is my first question. The, the record to beat, it does not mention tape in this story. Wow. The record to beat was one minute, 21 seconds. David and seven of his lucky neighbors managed <laughs> to break the record with a time of one minute, 17 seconds. Where'd they find newspaper? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, they right? Wrap them in iPads? <laughs> <laughs> wrap them in iPads. That's funny. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Chick, my grandma still reads newspapers. Newspaper. Did you happen to see my Instagram post yesterday? I did. I went over so to cute. her house Memorial Day, and she had the paper on yep, the table. Yep, yep. And the headline was mm -hmm. Weed Wines, and she had underlined it and wrote in Willie question mark <laughs> above it like she saw it and wanted to save it. Well, how nice. <laughs> it was very sweet, but I just hate that she thinks I'm a little stoner. Well. She's the best. <laughs> so, was it about wine made with marijuana? I, I, truly, I didn't read the oh, article. Okay. She gives me a lot of articles. Boy, I never read them. Oh my goodness, do I never read them. Well, Breaking just, her heart. <laughs> right now. Oh. Send me a link, Grams. Come on, old lady. <laughs> Come on, old lady. I so, love my grandma. I, Come I, on, I, old lady. I watched this video and they're wrapping this kid in newspapers. Uh, and again... Is the, it an adult? Well, it's a... It looks like some of the neighbor kids, they look like they're teenagers. They're having, they're having fun. Right. Um... Yeah, I'm again. Where do you? Who even has newspapers lying around? Anymore? I heard uh, David Rush uh, thought it was some of his kids. Oh, yes. really? Yeah. I didn't he know. Thought, he thought it was. Do yeah, I yeah. know you? Get over here, son. Son? Sure, son. son. Yeah. Son? <laughs> it's essentially a pit crew, uh, but it, it looks like they're having head, a face and all. So if no, they they do, they. It looks like they wrap everything except the head and face. Okay. They look. They have like neck newspa down newspaper boots on. And so if it's <laughs> eight people, then there obviously is a record for the quickest. Way to wrap a person in newspaper, like, yeah, and I believe he has the people, he or? has the I think he has either the two person or the solo record. It's, okay, he does. They're all very dumb, yeah. but funny. How bizarre! How do you wrap yourself? In and uh, Rush has a new hair thing going. Yeah, how do you wrap yourself? In What's his new hair thing? Kind of a comb over thing. He had, he was he had a real buzz cut before. And now he's got kind of a. Oh, okay. How do you feel about? It? I I don't know. I just think I just noticed that it's. You it's, have to admit that you are. <laughs> You are fascinated by people's hair. You know that, right? Well, it's interesting. A public relations move. I think that he... What a weird thing. Uh, wrapping people in newspaper. Right? Sort of people Why in Why is shade. that a world record? <laughs> ironically, <laughs> ironically, it won't make the paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
This, it has online exclusive written all over <laughs> it. Don't you think they should <laughs> take a look at all the records and maybe cut a little of the fat? Yes, absolutely. You know, like like the gross records, like the world's longest fingernails. And no, all that that's, that's dedication, dude. Ugh, Are I you like kidding those. me? Yeah. He's dedicated his life to being a weirdo. He should be rewarded for Yeah, that. he doesn't just wrap people in newspapers Goodness and be done no. in a minute. I'm assuming yeah. they still publish the annual... The thick book, book. the tome. Because every year, the library would get that in at our school, and we would just go nuts. Really? Oh, we loved looking at the two fat guys on motorcycles. And <laughs> yeah. When it was like a library day, when you're like going in there, yeah. you'd be rushing. Otherwise, you'd have to read like Charles Dickens or something dumb. <laughs> yeah. Weren't the two guys, weren't the two big fat guys on mini bikes? Yeah. And like yeah. they just absorbed the bike. It, that's kind of what it looked like, right. Are yeah. they still with us? No, no. They can't. Oh, God, no. No. that was a long time. <laughs> I, I, I am almost certain they did not die together, though. One, one was left. Really? By himself. That's sad. And well, not, of course. And did I mean, not. How often? I'm waiting. Mean, how often twins die together? Yeah. I mean, quite often. Unless they're, unless what? they're. What do they call? What is the problem? Conjoined. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> quite often. <laughs> I knew a guy whose conjoined twin died like four years before he did. He, boy, he's lugging that thing around. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. It's a lot of deodorant. <laughs> it's a lot of deodorant. You're talking about weekended Bernies. <laughs> Yeah. Now, uh, coming up, we what have a, 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 st a, a state a state asking people not to pose nude for their driver's licenses. I, I can see why. And we have the new no wash movement afloat. I know you're going to love this one, Tom. It's about your clothing. What about tickets? What do you mean tickets? No wash, no tickets, no tickets, no wash. What's he talking? Let's, about? let's just no leave idea. it at that. We, we know what he's talking about. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want to do the. Uh, the I don't want to oh. go full boat. <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. I, oh, I just figured it out. It just... Okay. <laughs> People who figured it out are laughing. No, no, no. They're canceling. Oh, okay. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. This is the Bob and Tom Show. So we have uh, invited um, Leslie and Lindsay, two uh, beautiful young women, oh. to uh, uh, volunteer to get a tan. And I believe uh, Leslie, is Leslie ready to come? Oh, okay, here we go. Leslie is, um, uh, how can I word this? It appears that you have not been in the sun at all. I'm fair-skinned. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yes. but you have virtually no tan no, lines. No, I haven't been in the sun in a couple No swimming, weeks. no, okay. Mm -hmm. Very light complected mm -hmm. uh, with dark hair. So, Leslie, this is a sem semi-personal question. When you go on a regular basis, do you go with the bikini on, or do you go uh, I, with... I do not. I wear the paper panties. Paper panties. Really disgusting. Okay. So everybody likes yeah. the no tan line mm -hmm. look, huh? It's like a map. She has a tan line. It's just not up top. I'm a tan line fan. They have to but now, bathing uh, Noted. Now, presumably... <laughs> Presumably, then, you're going to have a tan line now. You know, even she's caught on to you. Yeah. Even Angie, our guest. Even our well, guests noted. are like, yeah, noted. Whatever, move on. Um, uh, let's bring in Tim Cabot. <laughs> Lindsay is another gorgeous woman. Uh, Hi. Step right up there, Lindsay. Come uh, on in. Uh, to my office. She's, uh, she's wearing hall. a Bob and Tom bikini. Is that me on your breast? A Bob and Tom, <laughs> Bob and Tom <laughs> bikini with Bob and Tom on her buttocks. Who, who is the genius? I don't know. But How is she going to get more tan? <laughs> she's slightly tan. She does though. have some tan. tan. So what are you going to do? Pretty tan. tan. So what do you do, to, what do, you do uh, to Lindsay when you're already a little bit tan? <laughs> It's just going to enhance her color. Okay. It's just going to make her even tanner.
Van Houten was 19 when she participated in two killings alongside Manson and other Manson followers in 1969. She's been in prison for more than five decades, and parole has been recommended five times. But all the governors, including Newsom, have rejected each one of those recommendations. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Dear wonderful people, I pulled a Tom today. Oh, so it sounds okay. like he likes the show. My wife was asking about the time we were on cable cars in Germany. I could not remember the name of it, so I called it <laughs> a human basket on a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. No matter how hard I try, can't keep my hands off my face. <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7. It's Dan Greeter. Dan, Good morning. Dan, how are you? Dan, Good. Dan, first off, nice. uh, yes. you're from Cleveland, but you went to school at Ohio State. Ohio. How'd Columbus. that go? I, I loved it there. I'm a big football fan. I, I love uh, college football. You know, we should have a college football team. I was in Boston a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. I was turning around. I went down to Cambridge. You know, I was walking to Harvard mm -hmm. campus, sure. or, you know, pretending. And, sure. uh, <laughs> and it dawned on me, Harvard, they didn't put anybody good in football, do they, Harvard, huh? Ivy yeah. League, bunch of wimps. That's Big Ten, you know, Pac-10, it's big business. You got the football program. Every you know, people may take a class or two. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's Harvard, you got the school football game, might break out on the weekend. I think, if, <laughs> no. I think if Harvard ever played like Ohio State in football, the play-by-play -play be something like, and Harvard's quarterback has dropped behind the line again for loss of 40. Harvard's... <laughs> Harvard's man there, of course, is Chad Elmhurst. Chad is an academic All-American at Harvard, majoring in physics with a minor in mathematics. And Bob, they tell me he's actually graduating a year early. <laughs> yeah, he's not going anywhere right now because he was flattened by Big Moose McCauley. <laughs> Moose is a sixth-year redshirt freshman, <laughs> majoring in scuba diving. And Bob, there's a nice shot in the stands of his wife and five kids. <laughs> yeah. He drives a Lexus. <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24-7. I mean, why the penis and the breast? Those are the only two body parts we're crazy about getting as big as we can get them, right? Although some I mean, people are doing uh, the... Uh, the buttocks. The buttocks what? implants. Yeah. 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 Buttocks yeah. Implants. Yeah. That's new. Yeah, it is. Normally, you know, well, then they, they sell uh, panties with inserts in them. Yeah. Or, and, and underwear for men with inserts yeah. in them. See, that's... Wow. No, you, I assume you, have, you haven't had any plastic surgery of any kind. <laughs> no, no. 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 <laughs> I had an idea. Why do you if assume so, that? If so, you should sue. <laughs> <laughs> because because if, if the doctors arrived at that. Um, yeah, well, you, you should have seen them before. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unless, no. your, unless your nose was shaped like a penis uh, before. <laughs> you really. This isn't enough. This, no. That, no, 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 that, no, no. They, they, they could have done no, a little no, bit no. better. Uh, we're going to take a break. Well, Phil is one of our friends. Let right? him defend himself. Oh, oh, no, no, don't, no, no, that was on Bob. That one was on Bob. You piled up. Greg Hahn is our guest. <laughs> I went out with this one girl. Can I say this? Yeah. Sure. Get a load of this. I'm on a date. I was out with this girl, right? Here's what she says. It's true. She says, oh, I did something she didn't like. She goes, oh, you just lost some points. Oh, there's points involved. That's a point system that the women have. It's a point system. Men, we don't know what's going on. All we know is it involves points, and all of a sudden, we're down. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my impression of her mother. <laughs> She's like, oh, you just lost some points. I'm like, really? How many did I start out with? <laughs> Don't ask any questions. You're just going to lose more points. Well, transfer my account to your younger sister. <laughs> Hi, this is Augie Smith. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Yes, you are hot today. There's Christy Lee Hello. at the news desk. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hey. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I laughed at his joke today. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Since you laughed at Ace's joke, I say time for a bonus Ace Cosby joke of the day. Who's that yeah. sexy man with a deep voice? Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. Hey, Chick, I'm, I'm working on the uh, fitness routine for insects. <laughs> You're working on a fitness routine for insects. Yeah, it's going pretty well. Just working out the bugs. That was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. Well, well, well. 
you know, back to square one. Okay. Yeah. I, I like today, so I thought it was <laughs> Working out the bugs. Uh, okay. Shoveling sand uh, back no, with a bottle. Have yeah, we completed our sports cast? <laughs> yeah, we, um... Yes, we did, with the David Rush uh, wrapping himself. Hey, hey. <laughs> Wherever you go, whatever you do, always. <laughs> Be a good sport. Christy! A growing number of people are joining the so-called no-wash clothing movement. What the hell's this about? According to the BBC, Josh, thank you for asking. Raw denim wearers will forego washing their jeans for as long as they possibly can. What are they going to do? Forego. Forego? In order to maintain high contrast patterns in their denim. The uh, CEO of Levi's has been uh, touting this for years. But he's also the CEO of Levi's. Levi's he can yeah. grab a new pair whenever he wants. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jeans wearers are not the only people cutting down on laundry. Designer Stella McCartney made headlines in 2019 when she said she does not clean her clothes unless she absolutely has to. Stella by starlight. How nice, Josh. Advocates <laughs> add that not washing your clothing is A, environmentally friendly, Shut B, up. cuts down Shut on up. electricity costs, Shut up. <laughs> and C, helps clothing last longer. Though garments do develop smells, no wash proponents have devised alternative methods for reducing odors, such as filthy hippies airing the clothes out. However, exposing garments to the sun or freezing them, and spraying armpit areas with vodka or vinegar. Come on with this. Yes. Yeah. Really? yeah. If someone could drink that vodka, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> if if you're reasonably clean, you mm -hmm. shower every day. You don't sweat that much. You just sit around in a room. Yeah. Running your trap. <laughs> trying to make people laugh. You don't have to wash your jeans, do you? No. I wash my jeans every two or three in the winter, every two or three wears. No kidding. Uh, what, where are you at? I have, uh, I'm going to say I have four pair of jeans, and I rotate, and I can't remember the last time I washed any of them. Boy, that's no, don't they feel greasy? No. They stretch ever, out. That's the problem. You have to wash them. To do you ever dry clean them? The nice ones that they, they fade with the wash? You ever get those dry cleaned? Mm -hmm. Can you dry clean jeans? Can you dry clean I'll jeans? do it. I feel like a loser when I do it. I feel like an I, idiot. I, I just put, I like to wash everything in really hot water. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Burn as much energy as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and wear all the garments down till like they're threadbare. Yeah, and... that's fine. Do you wash your pajamas every night? No. I don't have any. I don't wear. I have gym trunks. I don't wear pajamas. Do you, Ebenezer? <laughs> You're wearing pajamas every night. Your nightgown and your cap. <laughs> yeah. You wash them every night. How many times a week do you say who goes there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how often do you wash the lantern you hold while Good. you say? No, I, am, I wear uh, beach pants. They're like what do they call the what are those striped pants called? They're like seersucker pants. There you go. Thank you. Those seersucker. They look like suit pants. Yeah. I have some of those. I like those. Yeah. Oh, okay. You wash them every day. Yeah, you, you, you've slept in them. Oh, my so God. What do you think you're doing when you're sleeping? Why are you sleeping? What are you, yeah. You shower, right? Apparently yeah, you're sharding them every night. You think there's crap <laughs> falling out of that hole all the time? In the middle of the night? Are you, not you, are you referring to my mouth? <laughs> no. Do you have anal leakage? Tell us. No. <laughs> Crazy dreams. I mean, crazy, I, crazy, I, I crazy was dreams. part of I, this no washing of clothes movement. I was part of this when I was in college. <laughs> like every college student. Because, yeah. Do you remember that, trying to get quarters together? Yes. <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> Gee, <laughs> many Christmas. Uh, I do. I haven't been to the laundromat in a couple of years. Do they now have credit card Absolutely. entry? Mm -hmm. yep. You don't put the quarters in anymore? I, you may Some still you be do. able to, but you can, you can, they also, swipe, also have cards you buy. You have to buy a card. Yeah, and then you swipe those, you, yeah. you fill those cards. Are you doing the laundromat, Ace? No, a couple years ago, my dryer went out, so I had to do the Yeah. Laundromat. And then there's the cash-only ones, and those places are washing more than clothes, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Washing a little bit of money around. <laughs> laundry. laundry. Mm -hmm. Do they have a place you can drop them off? You don't feel like doing laundry? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yep. right up the street have here. You, Chick, have you ever had it done? Bluff and folds? No, I'm thinking about it. I'm it's, deeply, I'm seriously considering it's it. It's a very decadent. Uh, yeah, it's an indulgence. It, it's a, yeah. It is an absolute. That's the, yes, thank you. Yes. I had a washing machine issue, and the place right near you, just north mm -hmm. of your house, they're good. Fluff and fold. Yeah, I dropped uh, it off. It's called it fluff up. and fold. Fluff yeah. and fold. Mm -hmm. That sounds like another morning show. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would they be? That'd, uh, that'd be. I have to be late at night. All household tips. Fluff and fold. <laughs> Folds <laughs> always leaving halfway through the broadcast. Oh, like, like click and clack, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a question. The end of this article says 
if you don't wash your clothes, you can spray the armpit areas with vodka or vinegar. Yeah, yeah. see how your boss likes your uh, <laughs> yeah. vodka smelling garbage. Yeah, you boosted oh, it up again, Chuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Here's I thought vodka problem. was the one that doesn't smell. That's why people drank it. Uh, that's, no, that's not true. true. <laughs> and, uh, and also, wouldn't that be really expensive? Uh, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Um, not that expensive. You know what I'm into is uh, this designer, your son... Remember the John Mayer laundry oh, yeah. detergent? What? There's this uh, it's called laundress? designer laundry detergent now that I'm into, and I can't <laughs> tell you what I'm going through to find I have the right. The, I have the sheets. Have you seen the... the... I got the dryer. I've got... No, like... these are washing machine sheets. You just put two of them in the washing machine. Is that a detergent? Yeah, it's a so detergent, they're like, but they're in a sheet They're like form. Listerine strips? Kind of, but they're bigger. <laughs> no They kidding. taste worse, yeah. though. <laughs> and they come in a box that is very small, so it takes up no space. It doesn't... <laughs> you come in a box awesome. Oh, sorry. I have a question. Yeah. You ever get the... I uh, like the uh, Tide pods. Yeah, I don't do those. But the thing they come in only has an indentation on one side of the container. That's where you grip it. I yeah. know, but they should have it on both sides so you can get it over your fans. No, they, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a safety so people can't get in there and put them in their mouths is why they... No, 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 that's, the, to, that, that's the mouth thing. The they, child safety cap or something. Yeah, no, no, this, you can't grip it. It's a ter huh? terrible design. Chick, do you wash your clothes in Tide? Uh, it, of course. It's too cold to wash them out, Tide. <laughs> there! Is that right? Is that right? I got that. Oh, nice, yeah. nice tip. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. You know what I like? I mean, I'm all for the environment. You know what I really enjoy the environment? When I'm wearing freshly cleaned clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Out there, These feeling are, good. The ones I use are called clean people. They're great. Laundry sheets. They yeah. just... Awesome. I have a monthly... Whatever, wavy gravy. I have, a I have a monthly subscription, and they send me Australian sandalwood or something. I really like the way it smells. This, Ooh, this that's that's I thought I was For your laundry? Yeah. And I have dryer sheets that match Nobody that. pisses money. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, would you move back to America? Fast forward five years from now. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I used to be Chick McGee. This part of the bridge I is mine. Laundry <laughs> detergent from down under. Yeah. Give me five bucks. I'll do Mr. Obvious I for had, you. I had six cars. You smell sandalwood? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's a hint of sandalwood. This part of the bridge is <laughs> mine. Uh, That's right. This is just a bunch of dumb hippies. <laughs> This is just a bunch of dumb I, I love saying that stuff with a hint of uh, I, I, humor. I, <laughs> yeah, why don't you why don't you go back and humor that up, will you? Yeah, <laughs> no, why not wash my clothes anymore, really? Oh, great. Go live under a bridge. <laughs> In another country, okay? You don't come over here because it's part of the mine. <laughs> take, it's part of the mm -hmm. <laughs> Take a shower, sunflower. <laughs> take a shower, sunflower. <laughs> hey, are you listening to uh, the Bob and Tom show on the Raycon earbuds? Well, well if sure. you're not, you're missing 30% of the broadcast. I hate to break it to you, but that's absolutely uh, a fact. It's been... Uh, it's been measured. <laughs> Raycon wireless earbuds, their mission, to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. With Raycon, you can get a pair and a spare. They're so affordable. And still pay less than you would with some of those other big name fancy schmancy I'll tell you what, I, tech I, brands. This is a true story. I um, uh, it misplaced my charger for you my told Raycon me, earbuds. You told me about this. And uh, so I had to use the other kind. That I had when I that I bought them when I when I got my iPhone and they stink, hmm. so uh, they kept they kept turning off. They never bought. You try to put them on and they, they never work. Raycons instantly pop on. Don't fall out of your ears. Great sound, half the price. Uh, they have my personal endorsement. We get love letters about the Raycons for a reason. They're great earbuds. And of course, Raycons have eight hours of playback. Crystal clear call quality and water and sweat resistant. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Score 15% off the already low price on your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. They are great. Now, uh, coming up, we have a really cool, interesting thing, I think, uh, about us. In some places, they have too many schools. School buildings, mm -hmm. they get extra ones. Yeah. So they have to sell them. Right. How about living in one? Well, it's going to be happening, and it is happening. We're going to tell you about that. Also, um, do you want to fly in a non store bought airplane? <laughs> you might want to rethink it after you hear this story. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
I'm not a stripper person. I don't go to strip clubs. Uh-huh. No, I don't. I, I just. I know. They come to you, right? But, uh, uh-huh. Well, kind of. So how I'm dating a stripper, I don't, I don't understand how that happened. And yeah. it, it, what happened was I met her outside of the situation. She's, a, she's getting a little older to be that. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said she was a writer. I met her at a social event. She goes, I'm a writer. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, that's interesting. What do you write about? She goes, well, I write about sex work, being a dominatrix, and stripping. And I'm like, why do you write about that? She goes, well, that's what I do. Oh. So somehow or another, I just held on to writer. <laughs> and, uh, fascinating so, writer. Yeah, fascinating writer. In case your mother's yeah. still alive uh, and you have yeah. to tell her. Uh, See, yeah, right. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm, I'm dating a woman who... Uh, you know, who does dominatrix work. She mm-hmm. spanks men and, and you know, says, you know, that, that whole thing. And, and I'm not into that. That's not my bag. Right. I, I just, it's I, not right. my scene, baby. Not, it's no. not my no. scene. No. But I, I know that if I'm dating her, how am I not going to end up tied to a bed eventually? You how don't am I going to know that. Well, right. Because she's. I'm like, but, well, this is what you do. It's going to be work I for her. I picture you tied to a ceiling fan and her <laughs> saying goodbye. <laughs> well, hold on. I'm writing that down. No. But here's what I, I could see. I go, <laughs> High to ceiling fan. <laughs> Give her a good idea. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. well here's what I know what will happen is I'll end up tied to the bed. I'll be like, oh, no, I don't think I'm good with this. I, and, and she's going to be holding a ball gag saying the safe word is marry me. Mark Merritt is our guest. <laughs> Last time you were here, Eric, you impressed us with your uh, musical skills. You are... Oh, that's right. You, you are, are a manualist. manualist. Yes, I am. Now, for those that don't know what that means, manualism is the um, art. art of manipulating one's hands to make... Uh, there you go. To make that sound. <laughs> that, that wasn't me yet. I didn't. There, there we go. <laughs> you oh, you man. must be... Sorry, excuse you me. You must kick ass that at my, parties. That was my no hands. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know the chicks dig this. Yeah, well, I know they do. <laughs> Yeah, if you're at a party, yeah, this is my, Eric, this is my, this I go, this is my go-to on a first date. I'm gonna this say, if you're at a hey, party baby. and you see Eric and there's a big group of guys hanging around him, this is what they're doing. <laughs> wow. They're looking, yeah, they're looking uh-huh. for that, and, and then my Dungeons and Dragons kit too. Uh-huh. I'm doing that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, give us a sample. All right, there you go. Very nice. I <laughs> see the see the group of guys Whirl. laughing now at yeah. the party. Uh-huh. Yeah. What? Oh, wow! While the girls are all over there Have rolling you, their eyes. That is amazing. Have you ever been laid doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Anesthesia City. Mm-hmm. It's our once a year Malaise Days. Malaise Days. <laughs> Bring in your Zoo Book coupon and we'll knock off an additional 50% on scratch and dent ethers, pentothals, and nitrous. Anesthesia City. And oh yeah, free balloons for the kids. Hey, if they're real young, make sure they don't suck on any of that balloon air. If you know what I'm saying. Anesthesia City. Open every day. Ten until ten. Nine. <laughs> I'm Ed Padurl saying, so what's it going to take for me to put you in a coma today? <laughs> hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Boy, better get up get some exercise. Essential morning radio all day and all night. Well, shoot me when the beer runs out. Bob and Tom, 
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Christy Lee. Hi. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. He's over there in the performance room. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. Josh Arnold uh, is around here somewhere. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, now, when we last left you, we were discussing the so-called no, what is it, no clean movement? What is it? Mm -hmm. No wash. No wash, no wash. movement. No wash the clothes. Ugh. The B.O. movement. Uh, the B.O. <laughs> movement. Yesterday, we had deodorant in the news. Yep. In a weird way. Actually, some poor guy got a can of spray deodorant stuck up his bum. Um, apparently self-inflicted, I guess. Uh, hey, he was having fun back there. Yeah, well, great. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think that it would be like anything. You'd have to work up to certain things, right? Wouldn't you? I would think. You don't jump right yeah. to a can of deodorant. Start with chapstick, maybe. <laughs> It'd yeah. be like a uh, training camp, you mm -hmm. know? Smart. You can't, uh, you can't... Uh, you go chapstick, and then you go fungo bat. Yes! Because that kind of gets bigger bat. as what it goes. That? Start uh, out with a chapstick. A, a fungo bat's a slender baseball bat used yes. in practice. Oh, okay. It would be, a, a chapstick would get stuck up in there. The same, you can't... It's not long you, enough. You're not going to... Stuck up. Well, I always lose the cap to my chapstick anyways. What's one more? Oh, there you go. Oh, God. This poor guy. Glad you, just be glad that is Poor guy. He chose to do that. He was having the time of his life. Yeah, but it's, it's, you don't want to have that as the thing you want to do when you wake up in the morning. No. <laughs> um, well, I got the first thing I'm going to do when I wake <laughs> up. <laughs> probably, he's probably rewarding himself for a week of hard work. Grabs the deodorant can and goes at himself, sadly. Uh, let's uh, get to uh, happier Hi. times. What have you got over there, Christy? Well, the Georgia Department of Driver Services has issued a public service announcement asking Georgia residents to please wear clothes when taking photos for the newly launched div digital driver's license and IDs. Prudes. The new Georgia <laughs> digital driver's licenses and IDs require a photo, which you can be submitting, of course, via the Internet. Is that right? Yeah, but they're reminding residents there to wear clothes in these selfies because apparently people are not. <laughs> yeah, they might, they might get you out of a ticket, Christy. <laughs> uh, sir, my birthday's up here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely done, Willie. Thank you. Uh, wow. That's I'm sure this is a guy thing. Guy's not putting shirts on. Be pretty funny. And I've always contended that the state's missing an opportunity. They're it's leaving, money on, they're leaving money on the table. Yep. They should allow people to bring in their own photograph for their driver's license, and it, it, they could make it like a glamour shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care, but I think there's some people who really do. Yes. Uh, I know someone uh, who pretended to lose her driver's license because she didn't like the photograph. Oh, boy. Jeez. So I'm just saying, they could, hey, for who an extra... Who looks at your license at just, just for an extra, whatever, hundred bucks within these parameters, bring in a photograph. I uh, wanted you're to absolutely do, right. They'd make a ton of money. I wanted to have mine retaken for uh, press. Uh, well, for the, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I just got a new uh, ID to go through there, and uh, I was not pleased with my photo. I wasn't either. I didn't <laughs> know they were like going to do that. Uh, I'd like to, can we take another one? Uh, no, they say. No. Tom, I'm surprised you haven't changed your passport photo. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's terrible. In my passport photo, I, I it is the worst picture. As I was re-entering the United States take last year, human being, yes. The uh, guy said, "This is the worst photo <laughs> I've ever seen." I am in that photograph. I look darker than Ace, hmm. and it's I, th I think it w whatever what is it called the fixer on the, the photograph didn't the color correction? No, the when they whatever the edit? Chem chemicals. Yeah, no, the chemicals made it, the whole thing turn weird. It is. It, I'm unrecognizable. I'm surprised they let me back in the country. Chemicals. Chemicals. We're using digital photography now. I do, I'm just saying it's That's the darker. worst photograph you've ever hmm. seen. I'll bring it in. You'll. Huh. Uh, in fact, I, I should probably get a new one. I uh, probably don't have time, but you know, I don't When are you going to need one? Where are you Next going? Month? I don't know. Who knows? Probably I don't you know. know. All he knows, he's not talking. <laughs> I don't believe you. Uh-huh. Maybe Moscow to... Uh, <laughs> help. Help. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, All right, boys, I'm here. There are, more there are more kids over here, Al. Fire the bombs that way. Darn right. Oh, jeez. I'm kidding. We need Just to uh, make sure you take my weed cartridge out of your luggage. <laughs> We all know that can be a real pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. The old weed cartridge. Well, that's no joke. Back in the day, I'd grab one of the suitcases and <laughs> <laughs> suddenly I'd have to do a full search after passing that stick over it. I'd be concerned, uh oh, who used this suitcase last? Oh.
Yeah. yeah. There may have been an aroma. What else is in the news, Christy? A cafe in Russia, speaking of Moscow, claimed it was serving up lattes made with breast milk. Mm. The cafe chain known as Coffee Smile caused a stir on social media after announcing it would begin using real human breast milk in its drinks. In one promotional video, a woman who claims to be a supplier of the breast milk <laughs> says, I have a lot of it. The child eats just so little, so I thought, why not earn extra money? I even make coffee with breast milk for my husband, and he liked it. I love it. <laughs> However, the controversial story went viral, and with the prospect of Russia's Food Safety Authority becoming involved, Coffee Smile owner Maxim Kobolev reversed his initial message and said he never intended to use breast milk as an ingredient. My bad. Um, Dear Dad. Do they rename the cups like they do at Starbucks? Mm. You know, Starbucks has that fundamental lie. Mm. <laughs> Tall is the smallest. <laughs> <laughs> it's so American to do that. Oh, if you want a really uh, big one, you get the tall. No, that's the smallest. Uh, would they do it like based on uh, like an A cup? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, that's a good idea. A cup, B cup, C cup, D yeah. cup, D's you the biggest. To go, you'd get a jug. <laughs> <laughs> nice jug. Because yeah, you have to get two. <laughs> Would that be legal? No, I don't uh, think so. In the United States. Boy, oh, I, I can't imagine. To call them A, B, C, and D no. cups? No, to, no, to serve, serve breast milk. Oh, serve no. breast milk. You can't even milk. bring homemade treats to bake sales anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. true. She could have. Could you get peanuts? Uh, again, yeah. I need a medical professional. Could you get like hepatitis or something from? I don't know if it's considered a bloodborne pathogen or not. If you if you could uh, catch something from breast milk, you, maybe I don't like, know. Would it, would a woman pass like meth or she would? That I think so. Yeah, because yes. you can't drink and breastfeed, right? Don't you have to pump it out and then wait yeah. till the morning? Yeah, pretty wild. I'd like to see photographs of this. We call it a Fappuccino. <laughs> as you <laughs> nah, knock one off. Can I get a coffee? <laughs> sure. Room for boob juice? <laughs> I'm a sucker for nipples. Did you say almond milk? No, I said Anna's milk. Thank you very much. <laughs> Would you, uh, did you ever taste breast milk, Christy? No. Why not? I don't you know. Never I curious? never was interested. I don't like milk, first of all. Have you ever tasted so. a... Uh, never mind. <laughs> you don't like milk? No, I don't. Never yeah. did. So if you won the Indy 500, what would you drink? Well, it'd have to be chocolate milk. I can do that. I can stomach that. Mm. Really? You don't like white milk? No. Huh. You don't like cream in your coffee? No. What country? Are you from? Whiskey in your water? I drink <laughs> black <laughs> <in your> coffee <laughs> like it's meant to What's be. What's all these crazy questions asking, asking me? Yeah, sorry, okay. Hey, Mike, Mark, have you ever had breast milk? Mark? Uh, he's, he's, oh, he's actually coming around to a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, all right. I thought all dads tried their wives. No. I can't wait, dude. Are you kidding me? That's going to be the best day of my life when I get to try that stuff. You're excited to well, try Well, wait a minute. You yes. Think she's going to allow you to latch on? Dude, I get a drink from the Golden Chalice. Are you kidding me? Sign me up. I'm mm. sure we could get a volunteer to come over here. <laughs> yeah? Does it, does it have to be someone that you have knowledge of in the in most intimate fashion? I think I would rather, I don't want just some strangers. I don't want, you know, Tina from the rest stops breast we could, milk. No, we, you have to do it because we could do a song. You know that great song, Strange Brew? Thank you. We could pat, we could do, <laughs> strange <your> boob. <laughs> Who are you suckling to? <laughs> that song is that song too obscure? I like that song. Uh, I'm pretty surprised you you didn't. You were saying you no, never tried it. Never tried it. Mm. Huh? I know. I'm dying. I never. I never even done. It. Yeah. I wonder if Oscar know. has. Oh, that, that he's a dirty bird. He oh, is. Geez. He's a he's a filth monger. <laughs> Well, Why would you think ask. that's dirty? dirty? I will go ask. Go hey, ask it. I say yes. Let's all, everybody let's else all in guess. here said they didn't oh, want to oh, do it. Let's bet. I'm going to say he has. I say yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I say yes, too. Only I'm going to say no. Okay. Hmm. Ace, you in? Going to say I yes say no. No? Okay. Really? Okay, okay. Now, we've uh, walked around the room. Mr. Oskay currently uh, uh, performing his duties. I, not only am I going to say yes, he has. He, I think he got strawberry quick and mixed in. <laughs> <laughs> What's the result? What are the bets? I, I say yes. Everybody yes. says say yes, yes, but Ace and I, we say no. He says, oh, yes, I have. Yeah! yeah. He, he, his our... review, it tastes like a warm, sweet cream. Oh, oh gosh. I should have asked him if he would have it again. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm a stranger. Well, I could go ask him again. From would you drink? It again. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said he would. He got a yeah. thumbs up. Okay. 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 But, uh, but that wouldn't be legal in the United States, would it? it ca I can't imagine. Well, I mean, maybe uh, between two consenting adults without any I business. Mean, you, you could Actually, whole milk, like farm fresh 
non-pasteurized milk. Raw milk? That's Raw like, milk. That's is, like boob milk, isn't it? That's like iffy. Is it, whether In terms of whether it's legal? Legal or not, yeah. Mm, okay. So I don't think boob milk would be legal. Um, it's not legal, actually. You have, you have to buy uh, buy a cow. A bunch of people go in on a cow and drink the raw milk. I, I think it varies, though, well, by, yeah, by it region. Does vary. Oh, does I it? can get yeah. you some raw and pasteurized milk. What? Well, Tuesday, really? Thursdays, and Saturdays. Where yes. do you keep the cow? Oh, the in the car. refrigerator, so the milk is cold. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? You have to buy a cow? Yeah. yeah. Put on People your buy, in, buy in on a cow. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you want milk or not? Yeah, we can all chip in and hey, buy, look, let's buy a cow. We It'll be, I love, I love big here. dairy. I'll be there at the State Fair having my ice cream. I love I love dairy. dairy. I love ice cream. I love butter. I love, but I let's don't like white milk. five or six head and put them out here in the field. Yeah. yeah raw milk. That's a great idea. We can butcher a cow every year, and then we all get to split the... You know something? I... Yeah, makes oh, sense. They, if they fence this thing off, could they where the big towers are? Could they put goats out there chewing sure. up the blood out there? Absolutely. Like, yeah. Not goats, cows. I want cows, not well, goats. Well, the goats would take care of all the weeds and stuff. Why do you guys want any of this? Much. Huh? Why do you guys want these animals? So we can have uh, fresh Healthy. milk. and um, Oh, I see. We slaughter them. We Farm have Jessica table. Hooker come in and you talk about a fresh goat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chick just cut his head off. <laughs> I'm just, just crying. Willie, Willie knows a oh, butcher. We're we, sacrifice we could add your things? butcher buddy, Willie, come over and butcher the thing. Just crying, eating the most delicious hero of my life, <laughs> and sobbing up my tears in the well, you know, You know what the key is? We can't name I'm sorry, Devin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're oh. exactly. <laughs> can't name him. Yeah. You ain't Ron. Yeah. <laughs> Devin's a great name for a goat or a cow. Devin and Ron. <laughs> A fertility doctor who was accused of using his own sperm to hey, impregnate hey. several patients. See, I don't care for the taste of that. <laughs> you want to be pregnant or not? Died. Huh? And the hand-built airplane he was in fell apart mid-flight. Oh. The guy from uh, what? This is the guy. This is a, this guy's. Seventy-two-year-old uh, Dr. Morris Wartman was a passenger in the experimental aircraft that went down in a pasture in Orleans County, New York. John, there's the phrase, right? Experimental aircraft? Yes. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Well, read, keep reading the part According about to the county sheriff, the pilot, Earl Luce Jr., was also killed. Sheriff Christopher Bork said preliminary Bork findings Bork. indicate that the wings of the aircraft became detached from the fuselage and fell to the ground oh, in an orchard. So you're on board the airplane. <laughs> if you look at... <laughs> Wait a second. It would be... Uh, <laughs> if you look out the uh, left side of the plane, you'll see our right wing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Heading toward it. Oh, wait a minute. If you look out the right side of the plane, you'll see there are no wings on this aircraft. Well... Uh, looks like we are uh, just one big giant jart. <laughs> well, you're right. The fuselage became kind of a glider. It continued west for another 1,000 to 1,500 yards before finally crashing. Not really that far. No. <laughs> Man, that's horrifying. It is but, horrifying. Uh, the, uh, this guy is uh, somewhat controversial. Um, they think that he may have... Uh, had a number. This is this has happened before. Obviously, the obviously. fertility doctor that apparently put oh, his own seed into that crazy the, and said that it, they were college God students. complex. Yeah. They have yeah. And, yeah. the obituary says he survived by nine hundred and seventy children and three thousand <laughs> grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but this yeah this guy and then it, there's a whole thing about how he um, one of his one of his patients as a gynecologist found out that that he was her father and he was. Holy heck. Yeah, it's she did a DNA thing, and it's oh really creepy stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple of these out there. A couple? Um, yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, um, the pilot. Yes. This is kind of complicated. This this guy wasn't piloting the plane, this this Right, this he, was a, he was a passenger. Yeah, but um, the pilot um, uh, was known as H.J. Um, Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> he donated quite a bit. As, and as opposed got, to huh. <laughs> D.B. Cooper, you mm -hmm. see. H.J. Cooper, I'll tell you off the air. I know when you put is. together one of these homemade planes and you're all finished and you look down <laughs> and you have that one screw left over. <laughs> <laughs> what did you go, oh, man. Do you go, hmm, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are people that do this that know what they're doing. Of course. But clearly, if the wings fall off, that's the that's the one that's the main thing you don't yeah. want to happen. Right. Uh, maybe I should have used all three hundred rivets. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I don't know.
Wow. Uh, there should not be parts left over. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, hey, you want to come up in my experimental aircraft? Do they have Sure, a... <laughs> he said. Do they have a kit? Oh, like, yeah. They surely, yeah. surely they do, yeah. There was I, a guy in my neighborhood when I was growing up who was building a helicopter in his garage. Was he crazy? A helicopter. We, we were fascinated as kids. We were like, man, oh, man. Well, I this, and he couldn't get up out of the basement. He, <laughs> <laughs> he should have built this outside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it, I, I might correct it saying, wasn't John Denver in an experimental yes. aircraft? Yes, he was. He, John he did, Denver. He John didn't realize Denver. that. I think as I read, there were... Couldn't he just flip a switch and there would have been another gas? Other gas tank. Mm-hmm. Yikes. Boy. Okay, well, uh, in any event, this, so there's a couple things that happen happening with this story, all of them odd. Country road, <laughs> speeding toward us. Yes. <laughs> Pat, do you have a song about that? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. We have another horrific death. Oh, well, I, okay. okay. Before we get Tell to me that, all about it. before we get to that, I, uh, Pat, yeah, I am going to, uh, in, in my own special way, connect this, <laughs> connect this to one of your songs. The John Denver thing? No, no, the uh, Sperm Doctor. All right. Okay, I'll okay. tell you. Uh, well, I, this may not work. But I'll tell you during the break. I'm <laughs> really excited. We'll make this it work. May Tommy. not work. Is it? I'm a sperm doctor. That could be that. I'm, I'm a sperm, sperm doctor. doctor. Watch the sperm go by. <laughs> <laughs> In my eye. <laughs> hey! hey. No, what? You're supposed to do that in the other room. Where am I going? Uh, okay. Um, what have you got coming up, Christy? Uh, well, we have a very tragic accident in Berlin. We have uh, bathroom kits being handed out to Coloradians. Coloradians? Coloradans? Coloradans. Um, and if you would like to live in your old high school, well, I can't buy that one for you, but we can find you one in Oklahoma. And uh, you could live there. Oh, Five oh, bedrooms, oh. two baths. <laughs> That'd be great. This is a real fixer-upper. Did you look at it on oh, the no. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a fixer-upper. Yeah. A little frozen for that action? <laughs> I just think it'd, be, it'd be cool moving into a school. Though. It would be. You'd have a lot of room. Basketball court. <laughs> oh, man. Cafeteria. Let it go. Your own theater. Yeah. Big kitchen. That'd be great. You have your own uh, stage. <laughs> uh, that'd, be, that'd be fantastic. Uh, right now, uh, I want to do a little quiz. Christy Lee, what is your sleep number setting, please? 45. That is a, a less than firm mattress. That is mm -hmm. a soft mattress. Uh, Chick McGee. One hundred, Tom. I like that firm mattress, and it stays firm on the sleep number bed. The sleep number setting of one hundred is, as you say, that is the firmest. This is all about adjustable firmness. That was the first step that the sleep number folks did when they designed the sleep number bed, and they have got that perfected after all these years. I have had my sleep number bed. I was trying to figure this out. I now believe it's nineteen years going on my sleep number bed, which I love. Either side of the bed has its own adjustable firmness level so it's like having 40 beds uh, when you when you go to the regular mattress store you're going well I guess I like this when you get home and you don't you're stuck not with adjustable firmness that's just part of the equation though sleep number can take care of heat and cold and do uh, lots of things to help you sleep better these smart beds actually coach you on how to get more sleep by adjusting the bed to its uh, most appropriate level for you, because everybody's different. We call it sleeping at the next level. From Sleep Number, unlock your unique potential with what they call the smart bed. That bed can perform as well as you, and you're going to perform better than ever. If you get plenty of sleep, we all know that. Right now, this is kind of staggering, really. 50% off the Sleep Number Limited Edition smart bed. Special financing is available on this smart bed for a limited time, subject to credit approval details at your Sleep Number store. You'll find out by going to sleepnumber.com slash btshow. That's sleepnumber.com slash btshow. Also, yeah, Christy's kind of giving you a little bit of a hint about something. Uh, well, you, you'll find out how this uh, relates to my love of Otis Elevators. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. some practice every night he played around too with some blind that he saw at the bar and the fly of the tiger was unzipped once again <laughs> and he thought no one would be the wiser he had plenty of women so 
some were skeezers and hoes who all had their eye on the fly <laughs> of the tiger. tiger. <laughs> 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 Back at home, Thanksgiving night, Tiger saw her unravel. His wife, Elin, a cute little blonde who you'd figure could not hurt a fly. But the fly of the tiger is right where she aimed. She took one mighty swing with his driver. She missed his crutch, but hit his tag Hoyer watch. She laughed as she watched time fly <laughs> off the tiger. <laughs> Buick's gone, <laughs> so was Accenture. Gillette cut him quickly. <laughs> It turned ugly when Nike pulled out. They took his hat and his shoes and his balls. <laughs> yes, the fly of the tiger has cost them a lot. But for Tiger, there's a silver lining. He's got a new sponsor. It's Danny's Restaurants. They're always open, just like the fly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. Lived it. That would be drummer Lowell Tolhurst, formerly of The Cure. In the book Gotha History, Tolhurst covers such topics as the art and literary inspirations for the music, the early makers of music through the current players, and the impact of fashion. He'll sprinkle his own memories from the band Cure throughout the book, and it hits the stores in the United States on September 26th. Once again, Goth, a history. That's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. 1539, Hernando de Soto discovers Florida, and that's a nice car. <laughs> Dude, Tom, you are killing with Armstrong. <laughs> 1964, happy birthday, Tom Morello. Rage Against the Machine. His last album, he's just he's beating his washer. <laughs> Damn, the speed queen. He's got a Rage Against the Machine. Oh, Rage Against the Machine. Oh. Happy birthday to the great Mel Blanc. And he was worth every penny, wasn't he? The uh, folks at Warner Brothers would just hand him every week a blank check. <laughs> and say, it's funnier if Tom would have said it. Thank you. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Essential morning radio all day and all night. Yeah! This is Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 20 She's the love of your life, and you want to make her feel special on Valentine's Day. Gentlemen, if you're looking for a romantic gift this Valentine's Day, then Freedom All Flores has the gift for you. It's our, I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers Okay. <laughs> yes. For just $59.95, you can send her the... I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers bouquet. The I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers bouquet proclaims your lust for her in the most romantic way possible. The bouquet of lovely fresh flowers says, let's do it and my loins ache. Your wedding vows didn't include a vow of chastity, but you're not going to see any action unless you act now. So pick up the phone and order the I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers bouquet. Right now. That's the I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I order you some flowers bouquet. With one phone call, you can cover your ass and get some ass. It's a win-win. <laughs> Call now. Because when Cupid shoots his arrow on February 14th, you won't be shooting anything. 
<laughs> Unless you get her some flowers. <laughs> hey, folks. <laughs> Boom. It's me. And you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. That's 24 days and 7 hours. No, 27 days a week and 24 like the show with, with the guy who whispers all the time and saves the world. And Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> it won't blow up the world. Jeff Jenna is our guest. I don't know if you remember this. A lot of people were mad at the Mattel Toy Company because Teen Talk Barbie, one of the 200 things Teen Talk Barbie said was, math class is hard. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and everybody, oh, oh, young women won't want to take math classes. And I, I'm just thinking, no, oh, that's stupid. What, are American women that easily influenced? Are they? No, I don't think so. Don't because either. if they are, I think Teen Talk Barbie should say things like, sex is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I work hard and give my husband my paycheck. And that is Donnie Biker. Hey, Donnie. Hey, I heard you guys talking about that man with 13 inches of pork. Yeah, yeah. 13 and a half. It's crazy. You guys know Jamie Bickers? You know drummer for Velvet Donger? No. no. <laughs> he was uncut, too, and he could hide just about anything. Really? Did that affect the taste, Donnie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, boy. I'm in trouble. Uh oh, what'd you do? Oh no, I got about a half, half mouth full of egg. Oof. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, there's uh, Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's uh, Pat Godwin <laughs> over there. Hey, chick. <laughs> Holding his uh, organ. There's oh, yeah. Josh Arnold. Doing the same. <laughs> we have fun. Yeah. There's Ace Cosby. There's <laughs> Willie Griswold. I'm touching myself. Oh, no, nope, I'm <laughs> My bad. More nuance next time. Sorry. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Uh, thank you very much. Just had a uh, interesting story about um, a guy who's a controversial figure, a uh, fertility doctor who's uh, been accused of um, using his own seed, if you will, to uh, fertilize many clients. Oh, uh, yeah, killed in an accident in a so-called experimental aircraft. <laughs> Karma. Uh, that the, is rough. Uh, the airplane, apparently the wings fell off. <laughs> My lim my limited better. understanding of the 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 engineering of an aircraft, uh, the helicopter doesn't really need wings, I guess, but it sure needs that uh, propeller, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah the, rotor. Yeah, yeah. The, the plane hit the hit the ground. It could kill the guy. But um, I got thinking about this, and um, uh, Pat, and I think I want to play something in a few minutes here uh, that has something to do with uh, the the seed, if you will. Um, uh, from John Fox, the uh, the comedian. Uh, it's a, a Pat Godwin classic. Yeah, but we'll get to that in just a second. You said you had a story about death. Another one. German authorities are saying a man died following an accident involving an old-fashioned elevator in Berlin. An old-fashioned? Yeah, <laughs> not that kind. <laughs> oh. uh, um, I actually had to look this up because I wasn't familiar with this particular type of elevator. Uh, fire service spokesperson Dominic Preetz told public broadcaster <laughs> RBB... Oh, lovely name. What is it? P-R-E-E-T-Z. What, who, told who? The broadcast outlet? B uh, RBB. Join the conversation with our news. <laughs> That's good. I love the man who was apparently descending from an upper floor got stuck in the elevator's machinery between two floors and suffered severe injuries. He died at the scene. Oh, oh no. no. The, is it called the Paternoster Elevator? Oh, sure. Yeah, those are widely popular. Okay, so I looked this... Did you look this up, Tom? Oh, yeah, no. yeah. They're open. They're like an open uh, cabin, and they continually move real slow, and you get in one. Oh, yeah, And okay. then you get off of one. They Got never it. stop, and right. there's like no a Ferris doors. Ferris wheel type, uh, yes. if it weren't to stop? Yes, but... Huh. It's kind of like a... Uh, uh, or those a Disney ski, rides? A, a ski lift. So yeah. It never a little stops. bit, but yeah. it's going up and down right. the floors. Right. Yeah, so it's like a vertical So situation. it's like a... Moving guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't That's want. That's one uh, way to look at it. When the obituary comes out, I don't want anything like he was caught in the machinery. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want that. These so-called elevators still survive in some German public building. Is the one where the accident happened houses an ophthalmological? I can't say uh, that doctor. Word. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And a uh, physiotherapy center, among other things. So you want to have this in a place where people have just had their uh, their, eyes. their eyes dilated <laughs> so they can't see. <laughs> or or they're there because, they, yeah, I'm going for physical therapy. Right. I, I've got a, they call them jump on, jump off elevators. Yes, That's they're really creepy. something. That they're very exist. scary looking. God, so if people who can't see her move well, this is your place. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is, you know, I've said this for years. You know how brand loyal I am. Yeah. yeah. 
Tide detergent, ivory soap, Otis elevators. Hmm. Yeah, there you it go. It can be a bitch walking up to 15 floors when you get there, and it's not a notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, taking the stairs. Yep. Damn you, Schindler. Man, oh, man. Mm. If, this... the Otis, if the Otis people are listening, please, I'd like a couple of shirts. Mm. Like I thought I you were going to ask for an elevator. I'm like, wow. <laughs> well, I could use great. one of those, too. My knees are killing me. Um, Who yeah. rides these? Is Such your people bedroom on holding... the main floor? Yes. Oh, that's good. What? I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Who rides probably, these? Probably best I didn't say If that. I oh. came over to your house, Tom, if I came over to your house, Josh Ike came over to your house mm -hmm. and laid in your bed mm -hmm. and then got up and left, would you ever sleep in it again? Hmm. Are you going to be naked? I sleep naked. So you guys are both going to get in my bed naked. Right. You just wash the sheets. Yeah, you just wash your sheets. It'll well, be, be fine. <laughs> you would use the mattress. You know what? Sterilize He'd, he'd them. burn the house down. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> if you're crashing at Gray Warren's house, will you sleep naked or boxers on for the away game? Uh, any away game, I'm still sleeping naked, man. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Unless I'm on like a couch, but those days are over. You're like a heathen. <laughs> uh, bohemian, really. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you strip the bed after to encourage the washing, or do you just leave it? I do. Cool. If I know that they're they're, they're the, those type of people, yeah. Nice guy move. Yeah. Do you wash your sheets every day? No, no, oh, okay. no that's crazy. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at these so-called Potter Nostra elevators. Yes. Would you ever get on ones on? This is. It's insane. Do you know what this reminds me of? Uh, I'll those, show you. you know those. What do they call those doors that spin around? Revolving doors. Revolving doors. Thank you. <laughs> And I hate those because I'm, I'm always afraid I'm going to put my arm in the wrong time and get my arm cut off. Of you course. go in arms first. <laughs> <laughs> you hate revolving doors. No, I can't stand it. This thing is terrifying. Wow. You have to, as this thing comes by, you've got to wait for the floor to get even. Then right. you jump on yeah, board. Yeah, but they give you yeah. plenty of time. It's not like double dutch. You've got time to kind of get your bearings. No, and but obviously in. if something goes wrong and your leg's sticking out, it lops it off. Apparently right. you don't have a lot of time because there's a guy holding a severed leash. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Chunk, 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 chunk. This is, I mean, this is, how could this be legal anywhere? How is it still legal? Yeah, I yeah. agree. Well, uh, yeah, man, that's crazy. Also, if I was in Germany, I wouldn't be too worried about upholding historic things. No kidding. <laughs> I'd say, hey, let's restart in the 80s, we fellas. We can't get rid of these. This was Hitler's favorite element. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Better hang on to it. They used to call it the Führer Coaster. <laughs> 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 One of the articles says Paternoster lift of death. That's what they called it. Welcome, yes. welcome to this lovely lift of death. <laughs> Can you imagine? But well, you just mentioned the, a theme park. <laughs> well, <that's> not <laughs> yeah, we don't got to do that. Or or coaster. <laughs> no. <laughs> People, when they instead of throwing both arms up, they just throw up. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay. a black and white photo of like an old timey uh, <laughs> Hitler theme. <laughs> And it's like, <laughs> God, and it's just very serious-looking men with their arm out like that on a roller coaster. Just the one. <laughs> no, this is terrifying. They would never allow this in the United States. Oh God, no! Thank goodness for that. This guy got essentially cut in half. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder which That's half. Awful. Was, I wonder which half was in the elevator. Oh, oh Tommy. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. boy, oh, boy. Well, I Ooh, learned something okay. today. Easy day for the coroner. <laughs> yeah. How what do you think he went, guy? Doc? <laughs> what killed this guy? I probably <laughs> severing him in half. That's just my guess. How do you think this guy died? <laughs> I'm going to guess the fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> How'd they get him off if it doesn't stop? Do you have to just time it outright and you grab the top of the torso and the top of the... Oh, I, I don't I'm know, Willie. Oh. Gross visual. Boy. I think it's right. Lift of death. Okay, yep. very good. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, we may try this uh, tribute, Pat. Uh, I got something for you, too, if you'd like. Oh, you do right now? What do you got? Right now? Sure. Sperm doctor? Sperm doctor? Oh, yeah, what do you got? This is the guy that died in the plane crash? Here we go. All right. From the woman's perspective. Here we go. I was feeling like I wanted a baby. I asked my sperm doctor, he said, maybe. I said, doctor. Doctor. Mr. MD. Doctor. Can you fill me up oh, with hey. the J-I-Z? Oh, oh. J-I-Z. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on. Jizz, jizz. Yeah, oh, all I need. All I really need is a good sperm. And come on. 
from yeah. an Italian or German. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe Buzz Lerman. Come on. Maybe, maybe. Buzz. A good sperm. That's all I got. <laughs> a pretty good, good sperm. I was, I'm good glad you didn't go with good sperm. jizz. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that true. to you. I just missed yeah, it. By the way, I believe it's spelled SM, isn't it not? SM? ISM, yeah. Oh, jism is, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, there was a great Lou Reed song that we can't play in the air. <laughs> there are a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ever. <laughs> that has a funny funny rhyme with that. In a, in a, a song that will huh. never, ever That's be played. That's the Western Chisholm. <laughs> on any, on anywhere, w- airwaves anywhere. Uh, okay. Uh, now, when we come back, uh, we'll have our little tribute. And we have um, the high school that's being turned into a house. Yeah, and then we have some... Other happier news, I guess. Oh, that's good. Is that right? Yeah, I don't want to talk about people being decapitated in elevators. No, no, he was cut in half. Yeah. It wasn't just the head, Christy. (laughs) (laughs) The torso, really. (laughs) Uh, So sorry. That's our fault. Uh, 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 This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob. Yeah, man, you know, they burnt the pig for us and everything. It was fantastic to see a pig come out of the ground and we just ate on pig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was kind of weird looking at him with his nose sticking out at you, but, you know, he was still delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. I just ate from behind, you know, that's what I did. Yeah, no, uh, no pig face. Yeah, right, you no. Know, no, you don't want no pig face. To, but my cousin, them eat pig snoot in St. Louis, which is crazy. They eat the snoot. The no snoot. way. What? Yeah. They do, really? Hey, yeah, they put barbecue sauce on it and eat it. They eat the feet. Mm. Black yeah, you will not lead us astray, I guarantee. Because I hate restaurants that have those, you know, named best barbecue ever, you mm-hmm. know. And then you go in, it's a more burnt barbecue, and, mm-hmm. and it don't taste good. I mean, they only have what you want because, you know, I'm from St. Louis. We eat rib tips, you know. Mm-hmm. And rib tips is like the top part of the rib. Man, and you cut delicious. it in. Listen, oh, my oh, good Lord. Oh. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lavelle Crawford. Uh-huh. Lavelle Crawford is our guest. And so far, we've had a tour of Hawaii. We have yet to see anything except for a pig nose. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 you know, I won a luau. I won a lu- I won the uh, hula dance competition. You did? Yeah. Wow. Uh, you yeah. can move it up. Huh? One thing I know about paradise for black folks is just it's something black people want to do that we see white folks do that we shouldn't do. Like, you know, going to Catamaran, that's just like being out on a raft with a motor. Mm-hmm. It ain't safe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wife went, just get out on the Catamaran. I said, have you ever seen a Catamaran? You don't even know what it is. You're from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know nothing about no Catamaran. Uh-huh. And, you, and then she can't swim. She ain't never been to a YMCA, learn how to float or nothing. But she want to go out in the middle of the ocean. Wow. <laughs> See, I learned my lesson with that jet ski. They flying around <laughs> on that jet ski, jumping up on the water, and I realized that water's hard as hell. <laughs> it is. Because every time you hit a wave, man, my junk was hitting me in the chin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so, wow. mm. so, so I, I know what water, you know, it's dangerous out there. Mm-hmm. And then my jet ski conked out on me, so I'm sitting down in the middle of the ocean. They had to tow me in, you know, I, and I fell off the jet ski. I couldn't leapfrog back on it. No. So, no, I couldn't do it. I, my blood sugar got low, I just had to lay out there and they had to tow me in. I'm looking like the Loch Ness Negro trying to come back in. <laughs> People t- taking pictures. What they catch? What you know, is that? You know, <laughs> I think it's a killer whale. Oh, uh, my. <laughs> so. Was that your surfer voice? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> But the numbers from the scales won't be flashing up for all to see. The airline promises there will be no visible display anywhere, and the weigh-in data will remain anonymous even to airline staff. The numbers are required by the nation's industry watchdog, the Civil Aviation Authority. Reminds me of a friend of the show, James Gregory, who had a joke about that same topic. When they asked how much he weighed and he asked why, they said, well, we need to know how much fuel to put in the plane. And James Gregory said, fill it up. I'll buy. But he says it much funnier. And that's a look at things you may have missed. Fill it up. I'll buy. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. 
Hey, Shooter, it's Kenny Tarmac. Hey, we just landed. I'm an ORD, just got in from TPA through ATL. And hey, guess what else just landed? The Bob and Tom app. I know, I know. Now, thanks to the Bob and Tom app, even if I have to go all the way from Foxtrot 20 down to Alpha 4, I can still listen live, see their videos, find an affiliate station, use the alarm, and even send a message. This is Kenny Tarmac signing off and reminding you everything I touch turns to sold. Hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom, all the time, in your ear. Time now for Flash Traffic with the fastest man in the world, nine-time Olympic gold medalist, Carl Lewis. And now we go to our uh, Flash Traffic reporter, Carl Lewis, with uh, traffic on the west side. Hey, Bob and Tom, I'm on the west side, and traffic looks great. Now I'm going to run over to the far east side and take a look at traffic conditions over there. <laughs> Okay, I'm on the east side now. Everything looks smooth over here. <laughs> Want me to check the north side? Uh, sure, Carl. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, gosh, traffic is running off the fine up here up north. Anything else you need? Uh, listen, Carl, uh, can you check south side traffic? I know it's a long way. You could uh, also pick up an iced tea for me, venti uh, green iced tea at Starbucks on your way, if you don't mind. Okay, okay, that's a little step, but I'll get there. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, that was a kind of a, a detour, but here, two splendors just like you like it. Oh, thank you very much, Carol. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, 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 Carl, could you come back to the studio to sign some photos for us? Oh, okay, I can do that. Sure thing, Tom. <laughs> <sighs> Made it, all right. Give me a pen. <laughs> this has been Flash Traffic with Carl Lewis. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24 Comedian uh, Kevin Pollack, when you're on the set with Jack Nicholson in, one of the, in a wonderful movie, A Few Good Men, you at, at what point do you break the ice with him, and how does that work? Did, had you ever met him before? Were you... No, I hadn't met him before, but he was the most approachable, gregarious screwball I've ever seen on a set. And I tell the story in my stand-up act about how my mom came to visit the set <laughs> and ended up hitting on Jack Nicholson. <laughs> During the shooting the courtroom stuff, and um, he saw me squirming at the legal table there in the courtroom as I'm watching this, and then th that became fuel for his fire, you know. And he came over to where I was sitting and said, Hey, Kev, how's it going? <laughs> Listen, I was wondering if you could do me a favor. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you might be able to get your mom off my butt. <laughs> oh, but he didn't say butt. No, he didn't. <laughs> She's hitting on me. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Take your mom back to my trailer? <laughs> is that what you want? <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7. Not on air, online. All the time. Bob. I don't think you missed one yet today there, bud. Nope. <sighs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, chick. There's Josh Arnold. I had a chocolate uh, muffin. And uh, <laughs> good, good for you. Good for you. Those shouldn't we'll be. Just, let's just go around the room. Good Those shouldn't you. be allowed at breakfast is what I'm trying to say here. That is, no. that is just a cake. I had no. <laughs> that is my favorite. If breakfast desserts need to be allowed. Don't be embarrassed, man. This is America. Somebody, is <laughs> and I'm acting like I don't know who, I put the Godiva chocolate individual wrapped chocolates back in the break room. I had four of those. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just, Am I somebody... offending you with my size? <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, Jess Galsman. She's hey. here. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. But, Tom, Tom, the difference between a muffin and a cupcake, negligible. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. Just, just because there's no icing, yeah. Dude, I, I am a huge fan of breakfast for dinner. Oh, sure, that's very fun. Yeah. Uh, because you're really, really hungry. <laughs> and I, um, but um, I, I have, tend to have more healthy breakfast. Let me ask you this. Why <laughs> yes. yeah. is a three-egg omelet in a restaurant the size of <laughs> yeah. a shoebox? Right. And a three-egg omelet at home 
is I think they're adding, tiny. I think they're adding milk. filler. What are they adding milk, in there? I think. What do they put? Milk? They really fluff them, don't mm-hmm. they? They yeah. fluff them. Oh, yeah, See, at home, I add nothing. You're, your finest chefs will tell you, add nothing to the eggs when you make an omelet. Is I go, that right? Nice and slow. I don't do salt till the end. Yeah, there's a few rules. Oh, how about that? And mostly they're overcooked at most restaurants. What about mm. vanilla? You afraid, uh, uh, you pro vanilla in an omelet? I've never tried that. I've never tried that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice cream, yes. Uh, No, no. uh, French toast batter, yes. Yeah. Uh, A little bit of uh, vanilla in your head. Sour cream. Now, uh, uh, speaking of additives to food, whip it up for 36 minutes. This is the perfect segue. Oh, Jesus. Um, I'll talk to you, Jessica, (laughs) since apparently you'll pay attention. All right. Um, We had an exciting story about a guy. uh, Imagine you're in a, in a, a small aircraft that your friend built. And, um, I thought the, you were going to say your friend Bill <laughs> had something to do with it. Uh, oh, your friend made this thing, and then it, the wings fall off, and you plummet to your death. Uh, that was experienced by this uh, fertility doctor in New York. Uh, this guy is also um, uh, the now deceased Dr. Morris Wartman, was a passenger in the so-called experimental aircraft. It went down in a pasture um, in uh, Orleans County, New York, apparently. Uh, the pilot also deceased, uh, sad to say. But um, what's interesting about this guy is he um, is, has been accused of impregnating his clients, if you will. Oh, one of those. Yeah, yeah. one of those. Uh, so it yeah. sounds like he volunteered the volunteer because he wanted out. No, 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 no. Not I, necessarily. I, I, you just, this, I assume he just wanted to go for a ride in an airplane. Who Didn't would? know the wings were going to fall off. <laughs> yeah. That's usually not Again, I, I, I love airplanes. I love pilots. Uh, I love everybody associated with the airline industry. I just, experimental <laughs> aircraft, I'm not in. I uh, <laughs> Yeah, experimental I'd aircraft. I'd rather uh, use one that's been uh, store-bought, yes. as they say. Now, I'm sure there's some great engineers out there who build their own. God bless you. I, yeah, careful, enjoy yourselves, whatever. But uh, getting back to this guy's gig, which mm-hmm. was uh, helping uh, helping to inseminate ladies, which is a <laughs> noble cause. Right. Uh, but you're supposed to do it. This, there are certain protocols. You, of course. You don't you don't use your own. Right. There was a really interesting thing on 60 Minutes a few years ago about some guy who was not only using his own, he was delivering it the old-fashioned way. Mm. And he would say to the ladies, this is going to feel a lot like intercourse. No way. Oh, yeah, way. Yeah. What, did you have a blanket in front of him? So uh, yeah, he had, and then there was no nurse in there. Oh and he had, in any event, this is a different P2V. case. Who knows? But when it comes to, <laughs> in, 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 the, in the world of seed. Is that different than POV? This um, <laughs> this song actually incorporates that in an odd way. This is quite a stretch. Huh? I'm, I'm famous for this. This is a um, Pat Godwin song. Oh, Lord. And this I is, mean, great. This is about uh, Pat. You want to give the background on this? Uh, I'm a traveling comedian. That's how the song starts. And this was a, a legend. You hear these stories in the road about a certain someone, a certain comedian. Yeah. Well, there was a time when, uh, and during the comedy club boom, in which each comedy club had the so-called comedy condo. Exactly. And so, oh. you know, Sean Murray would be in it one week. Then the following week, it would be Haywood Banks. Oh, they were the out of comedians that week. Huh? It would be <laughs> that God one. Uh, and so, but the, so the it, it, but Sean Murray would do things like he would take the paintings, take them apart, and write his name as if he'd painted it, then put it back together and put it back up there. It's kind of a fun little joke. Yeah. Yeah. And then other, and yeah. other people uh, would go um, too far. Funny, yeah. funny. And that's what that's what this song is about. Right. It's, I think it's a classic. <laughs> I'm a traveling comedian. I play a different club each week. They put us up in filthy condos, but man, this one reeks. The toilet's broke, it smells like smoke, stale beer, and dirty socks. <laughs> Who was the comic that worked here last? Must have been John Fox. <laughs> John Fox, John Fox. Keep him sober, and I hear Fox rocks. <laughs> But he'll trash the place everywhere he stays. <laughs> Smells like ass and cat food. No one's cleaned for days. <laughs> the VCR and TV's gone. The couch is stained blood red. There's empty Cuervo bottles. A passed out stripper in the bed. <laughs> Porno tapes, real twisted stuff. Fill a cardboard box with a label on the top that reads, Property of John Fox. John Fox, funny man John Fox. But if he gets too drunk, the audience walks. He leaves his DNA at every place he stays. So don't drink what you think is apple juice. 
<laughs> or eat the mayonnaise. <laughs> John Fox, oh John Fox, singing about the legend, the legend of John Fox. <laughs> Don't eat the mayonnaise. Mm. The uh, yeah, the legend was that Fox would. Yeah, uh, we kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. We understood oh, no. where you were going. Zero sure explanation. Yeah. Really that that actually that legend made it into a book. Yeah, killed. I think right. The book called Killed. No, uh, I killed. I killed. Isn't, it, isn't that what it was? Yeah. No, was it the yeah. Boston comedian uh, one scene? Yeah. yeah. In any event, uh, that that's the legend of John Fox. Uh, he's not here to defend himself, but I'll let him defend himself with uh, this uh, joke. This magician's on stage, and he invites this guy from the audience to give him a sledgehammer. The magician says, I want you to hit me in the temple as hard as you can with a sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> the guy goes, all right. <laughs> so the magician lays his head down on his block of wood, and this guy hauls back. Bam! Pops this guy in the temple. Ten years later, the magician wakes up out of a coma in the hospital and goes, Ta-da! <laughs> There you go. <laughs> That's how you tell a joke. <laughs> the economy of language is, uh -huh. uh, it's amazing. It's like pure poetry. No extra words, all the words in the right order. Thank He's you, John. One of the best when it came to that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, that mayonnaise thing, I think he probably did it. Uh, oh, yeah. Hell, man. Yeah. Hell, oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> he's also he's also famous for the for the alleged remark to a prostitute, "I ain't paying you to eat a pizza." <clears throat> yeah, that yeah, was a trivia. Yeah. All right, so, someone's going to have to tell me that story. Oh, well, I think it, yeah. I, I, that's I a think good. That pretty much is the story. Yeah, that's, eating pizza. That's and pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Papa okay. John Fox. That is oh, a good. Really yeah. just can't it, you know really? what? They're not all home runs, but I'll get on base all damn morning. But you're okay? working. That's yeah. the key. I'm working over here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Christy, have we missed anything? Yeah, a former high school in Oklahoma is listed for sale online on Zillow with an asking price of $60,000. The 17,408-square-foot building originally built as Burbank High School in 1924. When realtors uh, have sex before, do they engage in Zillow talk? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Zillow, Zillow talk came after. after. Thank you. Oh, Bella talk is after? Yeah. No wonder I've been not getting laid. <laughs> uh, we before. would have accepted uh, not getting laid or ain't getting no sex. <laughs> Either. The listing on Zillow says the single-family home features five bedrooms, four bathrooms, and one indoor basketball court. The school was closed in 1968, so it is a bit of oh. a fixer-upper. Yikes. Yeah. Um, I can show here. Josh, there's a picture of the basketball court. Man, old it, it, school, it's old, Burbank, but it's like... Oklahoma a, is trying to be oh, sold as a single-family home. Well, sorry. the listing on Zillow... What? No, sorry. <laughs> That's what, it, sometimes the audio shows up on so, this. Sorry. I was showing in it's, pictures. It's, it's, it's certainly... You know what? It's haunted as hell. That place it is haunted. You know what, though? A movie studio could easily just buy that up That's and That's what Chick it. said. Yeah. And he's, you guys are absolutely right. Here, Do like a modern-day version of American Graffiti or something? Kind of takes place in that era? So See, it has, it has a lot of fixing up that sure. needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. But but the, the, the weekly maintenance would be a little rough, but that's yeah. pretty cool. It's How it's, much is it? 60 grand. That's not Why much. don't we all pitch in? Where is it? Well, because it would, be, it would probably be... 30000 a month to get it back in shape and well, maintained. And there's a picture of the living room that they use. I guess it was one of the big classrooms, and there was a lot of shop vacs in there. That's a bad selling point yeah, in the world. Yeah, the ceiling appears to be doing... caving in in yeah. the cafeteria. I've yeah. always wanted to flip a property. Dude, going to the teacher's lounge, get all the old cigarettes, it'd be a blast. <laughs> one. You know something, that, that, Willie, it probably, since it's closed in 68, <laughs> still smells like I, I bet <laughs> Yellow walls. Back, back yeah, in the day, yeah. you have no idea. I mean, I do. I do. Really? I do. Did, they, did the teacher smoke when you were in high school? Uh, yes. No, we had an assistant uh, who would smoke cigarettes on the like porch area while we walked to the gym, and he'd always be like trying to hide it and cover it up. And man, we had a fun. student smoking lounge. Did you have? I that? was going to ask if you yeah, guys. Yeah, we had an outdoor they area. They got rid of that the year I got to high school. Okay, because yeah. that was school, not a thing for us. We and, had it in my high school. But we had a we had a guy come in. Do you know how those high schools, they have those periodic lectures and it's touring guys. Yeah, love those. Know, and ladies, they'll come in. Then today's thing is the guy came in and he was doing the uh, anti-smoking pitch. And I'll never forget, they passed around a human lung in a paper bag. Yeah. That was all charred. and Ew. In a paper bag? Excuse me, a not plastic bag. Not a plastic bag. 
Not a picture. No, it was a real lung. Oh. And then you looked at it and go, oh, my God, it was horrifying. But And then they gave the whole anti-smoking pitch. And in our yearbook, we had a picture of our headmaster, Mr. McKinley. <laughs> and, Mr. And, McKinley. And another guy fluffing away. <laughs> <laughs> At my school, the only place we could smoke was in my friend Eric's car. Yeah. But they hated it, man. Uh, they didn't, it wasn't sanctioned? No. Goodness, no. <laughs> well, uh, but right now, let's talk about something happy and pleasant. Like, let's talk about sex, baby. baby. No, let's, let's talk about talk the cafeteria. Oh. Oh, and uh, yeah. how about uh, having great food in your own little cafeteria, which is your house? That's where Hello Fresh comes in. Restaurant quality food, great food, and uh, here's how it works: Hello Fresh does the shopping, saving you a ton of time. They do the measuring. They have chef crafted recipes, more than forty to choose from every week, and they'll start you off with sixteen free meals as part of a very special program. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show sixteen. They've taken a lot of the work. And gotten that done for you. And the array of choices, amazing. They've got uh, new fresh and fit stuff in the summer menu. Also, calorie smart, protein smart, and plus good old-fashioned comfort food. So if you are stuck in the rut of your own cooking or tired of going to the same places, look at the array of stuff they've got. Make some great choices and enjoy HelloFresh. Willie, what's something you've been working on? Check out the barbecue pulled chicken tacos with creamy slaw and red onion. This is all done with one pan, by the way, so no mess. HelloFresh sends you eight ingredients. Put those together in four steps. In only 20 minutes, you have this delicious, colorful taco dish you made at home with help from HelloFresh. Perfect for the summer. Spend less time running around the grocery store. Like I say, trying to find how come in the summer cream i can't find the horseradish i'll be here all day no 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 let hello fresh do all that for you sign up today 16 free meals free shipping i'll say that again free shipping from hello fresh the code is bt show 16 you'll need that a couple times when you log on bt show 16 you go to hellofresh.com slash bt show 16 coming up i'm very excited about this sexy time with Allie breen this is the bob and tom show thanks for listening to bob and tom 24 7. Uh, let's see, that's Bob. I'm Tom. Uh, Chick McGee's over there at the uh, Harumph. Quality Drivers Sports Desk. <laughs> Christy Lee, Harumph. future truck Harumph. driver. You. Uh, that's me, baby. I'm going to be uh, driving the big rigs. We're going to get uh, Christy over to Quality Drivers and learn how to uh, drive the big rigs. Mm -hmm. uh, comedian Justin Willman has joined us in the studio. Hello. You may have seen him uh, on Ellen. You may have been at the White House when he was there. It's amazing. <laughs> he's, he's here in the studio. I was and... being dragged out of the White House when he was there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were you wearing a cape? Did you ever buy a cape? Did you ever have, did you I've got to have a cape. Oh, man. You know, I... No, no cape? How it's about a little a on the nose for me. Like, top hat? A top hat. I do own some top hats, okay. but I, yeah, I'm trying, you know, trying to help shed magic that. Magic wand? Do you have a magic wand? Shed that wand? image. Magic I, wand? I don't have a magic wand. The tuxedo and the cape is traditional. Those, those are, uh, those are the, classic. I thought they required yeah. uh, accoutrement magician. for a musician. Magician. I, and, uh, and, and, and a musician. <laughs> well, but I did, I had that face. We were talking about Lance Burton off the air. I had that Lance Burton face where mm -hmm. I would put that tuxedo on and ah. make doves appear. But there's something about like when you're 14 and owning a tuxedo that is that just doesn't and seem you, right you have to take care of the doves too and the doves yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot of work when they you're 14 you know what dovesy you know. uh dove, dove chow food. Dove chow. Dove chow. Purina dove chow. Purina dove chow. <laughs> I'm sure they do. I'm sure they make it. Uh, now, you um, were a longtime host on television of uh, Cupcake Wars. Cupcake which Wars. Which is now on Netflix. It is. Uh, is it, it is. The war rages on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nine right. years of production on the Food Network. Nine Jeez. years. Wow. That might be America's longest war. But you're a very slender man, so you, 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 never, you never ate a cupcake. Diabetes apparently. won the war, sadly, in the end. Now, uh, uh, the end. it's my understanding we're going to try to do another magic trick on the radio. That is, your understanding right. is correct. Since we don't know what you're going to do. Is this the, the kind we can what do? We play this by is. Play, I thought this would be interesting play. for the listeners. I have. This is a, a a lucky die I have. I'll show. And we're filming this, so if they yeah. wanted to okay. watch right. it later on, this is a pretty big die. Yeah. One paradise. through six. Do you want to hand that to, to uh, Bob down there? To me. Oh, all right. Let uh, me take. Hmm, I there's some something strange chick? about this Does die. Does that feel weird, Chick? It's no, no, not at all, actually. Uh, no. This feels like a regular uh, die. Yeah. So, Bob, think of a number from one to six. Don't say it, but turn it so that number's up, and then put your hand on the die. Okay. And tell me when you got a, a number that you like my hand, locked in there. My hand is on the die. Hands on the die, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a number from one to six. I want you just to say one, two, three, four, five, six, monotone. And then we'll see if I can pick it up in your voice. Maybe the listeners will hear it as well. Just a, a little a tell, if you will. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it was subtle. Mm. It was subtle. You know, I'm going to say, because, I mean, that was funny, but I think the number you sped through was two. I think it was two. Is it two? It's two. It is two. Okay. Because <laughs> he went one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> which All is right. kind of a misdirect. Now, maybe that Warlock! was- Warlock! He's a Warlock! Warlock! <laughs> Warlock! Okay, how the hell did that happen? Him. How did he do I'll that? Do, you can try it again, but it gets hard over time because you get very self-aware of your voice. That's a good trick. That's a nice it's trick. A, you know, it's a little psychological Here, you thing. do it with Chick? That's a, a gorgeous piece. Of, that's a gorgeous piece of business. Wow, <laughs> gorgeous. Now what do I do? Just, just what do I do? I'm going to look away. Turn, think of a number from one to six. Turn it so that number's up. Put your hand on it. Okay. Christy's watching and me. Put my hand. Right yeah, now. she's yes. on to me. She's looking. like, "Where? Okay, no got cheating. My got my hand in a on. mirror. Okay. Not cheating. Your hands on it. I'm, my right. hands on it, baby. Okay, I'm going to turn your way now. Is that all right? Okay. Go now you have to say say one through six. Go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, gosh. Okay. See, that was uh, your uh, radio voice was very good. Go yes, backwards. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Five. Is it five? I felt something with five. Please tell me Is it's it five. five. It'd be Is embarrassing it if it's not. Zoom in. Five. It's five. <laughs> okay, that's the greatest trick I've ever seen. We're hanging oh out with. He's uh, God. That's who that is. We're hanging He's out God. with Justin. You're Milner. God. We're wow, doing. I, no. Queens kick off the top five this week. Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story on Netflix is your number five show, followed by Queen Cleopatra, also on Netflix. The top three starts off with two Apple TV Plus shows. Silo, the dystopian mystery series, is at three, and Ted Lasso is at two. Regaining the top spot is Succession on HBO Max, your top stream show. And those are your top TV streams of the week on iHeartRadio. <laughs> and the sign said anybody caught trespassing will be shot on sight. So I jumped over the fence and yelled at the house, Hey, what you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Take that to the bank. <laughs> Off here. Oh. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Pat Godwin's over there um, just watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. Jessica Alsman is here. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Willie Griswold. Hey, man. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Can you tell us on the air what you were going to tell us off the air? Kind of. Okay. Uh <laughs> Um, That's and he, usually the case. Uh, uh, we're going to hook up with uh, Allie Breen here. And just, there she is. Bye, Allie, guys. Hey, Allie. You're back, yes. Are you back home? Back home, yeah. Okay. Do you oh, recognize the cube thing? Yeah, yeah. It's the, the Mondrian, <laughs> the fake Mondrian painting. Chick loves that painting. How do you know yes. it's fake? You don't know that. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, if that's real, you, she'll be taking her private jet here. To, uh, <laughs> now, she does fly around all the uh, time. Wait a minute. That, that would explain a lot. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, us, um, we often on this show, uh, when we have these ridiculous stories, usually involving Gwyneth Paltrow, she always has some... You know, ridiculous thing, telling women they have to steam themselves in the <laughs> groin area or whatever. Just trying to help ladies. Out. So well, where you are we know, going now? Taking whatever, crystals and cramming yeah. them up. That's it was a jade egg, but go whatever. on. Whatever. The, it's, it's stupid stuff. We often we often uh, quote um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Gunter. Jen yes. Gunter. Jen Gunter, who is the, this is this is serious, I'm not kidding. She is a okay. Canadian gynecologist, and she's written, she's written the uh, the Vagina Bible. Is that right? Yep. So that's what You're it's right. 
Uh, I, I read it, and I, I uh, my favorite part was Cooteronomy, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, but no, she she follows us uh, on social media. <laughs> Did you say? Oh, that cool. Yeah, she should. She That's was a exciting. Com- a comedian gynecologist. Canadian. Canadian. Oh. No, no. She, oh. But she she's she will debunk these dumb you know what things that always are popping up for how women. Know, how do you know she's not wrong? <sighs> Let me see. She's a scientifically educated physician. Gwyneth Paltrow is a actress. Okay? <laughs> she's smart, she, she seems pretty sharp to me. Oh, she's very savvy. She's a, she sells great stuff business woman. <laughs> by giving people terrible yeah. advice. But Jen Gucher is great. An appointment here is 140 bucks. Up in Canada, it's 170 <laughs> But it's... Um, <laughs> remember in books, paperbacks would say that? <laughs> like 5 dollars and then it would say seven ninety five oh, yeah. in Canada. Oh, Josh shows off. He reads books. <laughs> <laughs> Allie Breen is our guest. Allie is a very fine stand-up <laughs> comedian, and she's very fine on TV, too. And um, she likes to get letters, or I don't know if she likes it anymore, but she gets letters <laughs> about people. I like it. About people in their love troubles. Here we go. And, uh, we're going to find out what's going on and try to help. What do you got? Dear Allie, I am married with kids and I've never cheated, but I do like flashing people in my body parts in the car while I'm at stoplights. Oh, <laughs> I only no. do this when I'm in the car by myself, obviously. Uh, sure, it really obviously. turns me on. Yeah, turns yeah. you on. But am I risking my family by continuing to do this? Is this a man or a woman? This is a woman. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so she, that changed things. It's kind of a double yeah. standard. I don't think she would get in trouble as much. She, she could still get in trouble. Yeah, uh, no, but, but, but that is a good oh, point. Yeah. A guy would report her. They'd be like, nice. As opposed to a woman that would write down the license you, plate. Another woman will report Yeah, her. Yeah, that's uh, what's going to happen. Here we go. When your kid, if you have a young boy, he's going to turn 16, his friends are going to get licenses, and one day they're going to see Dylan's mom flashing her heavy hangers, man. This could be dangerous. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Rodney Carrington has a song about it. Mama got her boobs out. Uh huh. Yeah, this no. is fascinating. You're an exhibitionist, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I say do, but a very specific kind of exhibitionist in the car. That's when Can guys a- are in a car and they ask you to show body parts. Everyone's like, "Who would actually do that?" This is the woman. I, you know this what though. She may not like it if she's asked. Yeah. She wants to do it to oh. the unsuspecting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's the may, shock factor. I would recommend a psychiatrist. <laughs> what? I don't. Th- I think you're fine, ma'am. No, you're <laughs> real fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, say that, I would say that to a guy, too. You're fine. You know what? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Some guy's flashing his genitals. No, no. You, you, go, you need to. I mean, maybe don't do it at school yeah. bus stops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go to a psychiatrist. You need help. Oh, Tom, I don't think it's a psychiatry <laughs> yeah. issue. Well, then what is it? It's, is it, it, it's a felony. Probably. Is it in decent in exposure? Code. Yeah. Is it in decent exposure if you're in your car? Could yes. She, is that a felony? Could she have to uh, report when she moves somewhere to her neighbors? Is yeah, sex she, well, she'd yeah. Be, be a sex offender. caught. Is it in decent exposure if I'm standing on my deck? Yep. It's my well, home. Am I glad you said deck? <laughs> no, I, if you're standing on your own deck, deck. Uh, by the way, you've got a future in porn. <laughs> yeah. If you're standing on it, congratulations. <laughs> First of all, it may be uh, Everyone insensitive. Should see that. What is it? Desensitized, but wow. What a whopper. So what her a husband whopper. doesn't know she's doing this, apparently. No. No. It is risky behavior, there's no doubt. But she's getting off on the risk part. I know, but uh, she wanted to know if she could lose her family. Well, if you go yeah. to jail, yeah. you kind of... <laughs> At least for a while, no diapers to change. <laughs> More time to I fly. think you guys are right, though. That as a woman, I don't think anyone would put her in jail. I think I... people would laugh if she got reported. They'd be like, come on, nope. did yeah. the boobs really not, hurt you that much? Not these days. No, lately, the yeah. whole thing with schools yeah. and teachers, and uh, no, that's... Hmm. You're, you're in really bad territory. Hmm. But Do we have a happier, cool. fun letter? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Dear Allie, oh, I don't know if this is happier, but a woman I met on Hinge is married and was looking for people to attend her friend's birthday party. The married woman and I have been chatting for weeks now, and she really wants to have an affair with me. I am not married, but I still feel guilty. What are your thoughts? If it matters, she's smoking hot. <laughs> uh, first off, it does. Second, <laughs> I don't. I, no, I, I, you don't. You know what? Oh boy, what? I don't know. You feel guilty? <laughs> don't do it. Well, just... I, I'm confused. Where does the birthday party come in? Apparently, she. Was I guess she for just wanted to, to bring to. A, a she wanted a birthday date party. To the, oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, that's what she was doing. Trying to look for people to go to the birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's more than candles being blown tonight. Don't do it. 
I know. Don't also, do it. someone will find out if this is her friend's birthday party. You it's, can't be married and bring a random guy to your friend's birthday party. That's crazy. Well, but maybe her friend isn't married and she was looking for guys to come to the party. Oh. Uh, you know, for other single girls that might be at the party. Not so, yeah. so you're saying this guy should go on the date and hit on one of the unmarried chicks. Well, whatever, but she should not have an affair she with She sounds this crazy. Dude. Like that's, Why wouldn't the girl just go on and find a date herself? Hmm. I think we're getting, <laughs> we don't need to get bogged down in the <laughs> birthday party aspect. And I think if you, you say she's crazy, I think 90% of the women <laughs> in the, uh, <laughs> that write letters are, oh, sorry. I say don't get involved in this. Hmm. No, it's nothing but trouble. Run, run Josh, you can run, run like the wind. There you go. Josh, you are kind of an expert on this. I know that you've had five affairs with married women, so it's, you're the pro here. Right, right. But uh, <laughs> in my defense, they were the wives of my best friend. <laughs> What? Wait, is that not a defense? Uh, uh, hmm. Next. Dear Allie, I met my boyfriend while he was cheating on his wife. He claims he was cheating because she was super awful to him and treated him very badly, but he would never do that to me. Would you believe him if you were me? Yeah. Ugh. But I'm, I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. He cheated because she sucked, basically? Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Or didn't yeah. suck enough. Yeah. <laughs> Really. Man, I don't know. I think once you cheat, you're probably willing to cheat again. Because what if you start yeah. getting into him and hurt his feelings? Ooh. Well, I don't know. Gosh. This is a hard one. Go ahead, yeah, have fun. Did she cheat to... Was she cheating too or just he was cheating? I, I'm confused. She's not saying she was cheating, just him. Oh. Hmm. Well. But... Hmm. That's the rule usually. Once a cheater, always a cheater, I guess. Oh. What do you think, Allie? Should, uh... <laughs> Take the benefit of the doubt. Be That's like what I Josh. say. Come on. Let's if you really like happy. him, give him a chance. Yeah. So, hmm. but Maybe. throw it in his face every chance you get. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else, Sally? Uh, I'm not going to scream next like some rude a hole. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to. Dear Allie, the guy I'm dating loves to use baby oil during sex. But, like, everywhere. He'll literally pour the whole bottle on my body, sick. so we're sloshing around against each other. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, what a sick, twisted freak. <laughs> what a mess. Well, I hope you have plastic sheets. Well, That's so exactly what, what she said. What's I, the issue? I have to fully shower after every time we do it, and it's ruining all of my bed sheets. Uh. I want to tell him to stop, but I don't want to sound like a wet blanket. I, I, what should uh, I do? Presumably they make... I would, I guess, some kind of plastic sheet. Do they not? Oh, I'm sure they do, but a they have like for right under the, the bed. Yeah. <laughs> a little goes a long way. Just tell them that. Like, hey, a little goes a long way. We don't need that much. We don't yeah. Need to Why would you need a whole and bottle? Because he wants to. He wants to <laughs> sort of slide around on Gosh, it it's <laughs> everywhere. So sticky and nasty and uh, blah. No, it's. I mean, baby oil is just. Yeah. I think I we're like learning a little bit about Tom here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And rubbish <laughs> and baby oil over here. No, no, no. I, I've <laughs> never been. My sister used to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> that <laughs> way to no. Finish the story. Wait a second. Where's this going? She used to. Uh, we were just talking about this the other day. We were talking about sun tanning back in the day. Put iodine in baby oil? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Janie would cover herself in baby oil. Sure. Wow. And, you know, with, with whatever that... Go on. With SPF <laughs> minus 100. Right. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I could see how that would be. <laughs> Doing a lot of good work today, Tom. But she didn't lay in her bed covered in oil because it's gross and your mm -hmm. sheets are oh, dirty and everything's dirty. Hey, is this guy's thing? It sounds pretty harmless to me. I would just get yes, a plastic sheet of some sort. Yeah, Tom, she, she doesn't time. care for it. I, it. I don't... Plus, you probably... It sounds to me like you have an ashy baby sitting somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> they're using up all the baby oil. Yeah. Oh. The baby oh. Some dry, miserable baby. Dry baby. Think that's what it, okay. These people aren't living together, are they? In the story, it's a hookup situation. It sounds like it? a hookup situation. Do it at his house. Oh, go to his house. Will he be doing that at his yeah. house? Or is, I mean, is it kind of like when Those you go? Wife's there. Yeah, I was going to say Probably. that. It's like the previous letter he can't because his wife's there. Good point. Or just start dextering your room. Just put it a little <laughs> yeah. in, there you go. everywhere. Oh, I love that. Uh, <laughs> dextering. That's, that's a very nice idea. Yeah. But he went through a lot of his queen. Boy, didn't oh, he? Oh, yeah. Don't you think the local hardware would God. finally call the cops? Yes, yes. Something's <laughs> alarming there. Let's see. Four quarts of live, yeah. his queen, <laughs> and a razor knife. He was a busy man, Dexter. He's always renting a hanger. <laughs> Allie Breen is our guest. If, if, you want to, um, if you want to write Allie, it's A-L-L-I 
B R E E N, Allie Breen, on uh, all the social media platforms that count. And um, Allie, you got any TV gigs coming up? I'll be back on Kennedy next week. I'm not sure what day. And then I'm at the Parks Casino in Pennsylvania tomorrow night if anyone oh, wants yeah. to come out. Outside so Philadelphia. Say, so hi to my friends. It's close to Philly. Yeah. Okay. That sounded almost threatening, Pat. Yeah, say hi to my friends. Yeah. Say hi to all my friends. <laughs> talk, yeah. talk to Vinny when you get yeah. there. Yeah. Hook you up. <laughs> the the guy in knee brace. Make sure it's okay you're there, all right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Allie, we got time for one more. Dear Allie, I made up a few stories about going to college and vacations I never took to my new boyfriend. Now my family's coming to visit and my boyfriend's going to meet them. I'm really scared they're all going to find out that I've been lying. And Oh, you need to run uh, for Congress. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, 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 in New York, if you're making up where you went to college and entire resume. <laughs> That, uh, yeah. Should I chance it and hope for the best? No. I don't think telling the truth <laughs> is an option because I'd sound like a psycho. She, uh, huh? Yeah, why did she do this? Yeah. I don't to under... seem more interesting? Yeah, or... yeah. Probably. I mean, huh. um, unless they're a registrar at your former college, there's no way for them to find out. <laughs> well, she's worried well, that the family will The family will, will say family. something. Like, like hey, so went, yeah. uh, Andrea mentioned you guys went to Sicily. Yeah, we never went to Sicily. Yeah. What are you talking about? Wait, I, remember wait, wait. Yeah. I went to Peru to get my hair cut. You remember that? <laughs> Here we go. Go on Craigslist, hire several actors, <laughs> and keep the lie going. Yeah, what's your budget? That's what we need. You're assuming yeah. he's actually listening and paying attention attention to you, though. So mm. he probably doesn't even remember oh. anything you said about No, nobody hates men like Jessica Alls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. That's a lot I of details. Can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so just go with the flow and see Christ. what happens. <laughs> hmm. And if he was listening, just gaslight him. Be like, I never told you that. Are you crazy? That must have been some other girl. In my oh. head, if, if family's coming to visit, they're going to be more curious about him than they are about recounting your old tales. So I would say you're probably fine here. Yeah. Right. I, I say fess up. Just gonna, hey, babe, look, I did something really silly. I, I made up some stories because I really liked you. I was nervous. Uh, I apologize. I won't do it again. I said fess up. Oh, that's great. It's Let's true. break up. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, if he's, if he's a decent well, man at all, he'll go, I get it. I understand. You're absolutely right. Save him a lot of trouble in the long run. Yep. Just break up now. Uh, yep. I, there were a couple lies. I used to be a guy. Uh, so <laughs> Didn't go to Harvard. Team of men looking at her. Right, right, right. She's sick. That, that wasn't a skin tag. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Allie Breen, look for her on Kennedy and at the Parks Casino outside of Philly in uh, Bensalem, Pennsylvania. Ben Salem. Ben Salem. Yeah. I like Bensalem. I Is that too. too close to Bethlehem? It's close, but not is that it all one word? that cadence? Is it Ben Salem, or is it all one word? Little it's Ben Salem. Salem. It's all one word. Salem. Oh, I thought it was all one. It's still, okay. Ben Salem sounds oh. like a drug. Or a yeah. cigarette brand. Yeah. 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 Flavor, <laughs> flavor country. That's where Ben yeah. Salem is. Yeah. Ben Salem. I'm, I'm right. Ben Salem. <laughs> uh, uh, Relax. I'm Ben Salem. Do you know what this is? That's a bell. No, that's the sound of Big Ben, Salem. Ah. <laughs> oh. We have a Big Ben story coming up. Oh. And I just happened to have that story. Allie's shaking her head, Tom. She's <laughs> upset? Yeah. <laughs> She's visibly well, upset, We'll just have Allie. to go out on that joke. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Allie. Allie, you look wonderful as always. What does your shirt say? Thank you. Is it USA. USA. It does? Yeah, it's just backwards. It's backwards. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I thought it was an A24 shirt. Oh. I did too. Why is it backwards? <laughs> Are you wearing it inside that's out? That's my camera. No, I think it's the camera, isn't it? So that so is, this whole time, I, that, that plant has been on the other side? Everything <laughs> is... <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and, and, we, and we felt bad because that woman lied about her entire life. You're lying about what we're looking at right now. Wait this a whole time, your left boob has been your right boob? <laughs> wait a second. Hold, hold, up your, hold up your left arm. Hold My up left your left arm. arm. Well, that's just wrong. No. Yep. The shirt oh, might it's be all inside reversed. out. The shirt's inside, inside out. out. It's inside out. But it kind of, the, the way the seam looks, it kind of does look like it's inside out. Oh, my God, it's inside out. has <laughs> <laughs> been restored. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 why would the camera turn her around? <laughs> hey, Tom, blew our mind. now can we get rid of this sleeping. segment? Yeah. Please. ASU. ASU. Arizona State. Arizona State. Bear down, baby. It's the dyslexic ASU, sir. Shirt. Oh, thank oh, thanks, oh, Allie. Okay. See, Allie. Even backwards, thanks, you look pretty. Oh, wow. I, wait, but we should have asked why she got dressed so hastily. Oh, I don't know the answer. Imagine. Uh, right now, I want to talk about science.
Science. The, the science of sleeping. The folks at Sleep Number have spent a lot of time learning about sleeping and doing lots of different experiments. They, of course, came up with adjustable firmness for the mattress. That was step one to create the Sleep Number bed. They did that a long time ago. They've got that perfected quiz time. Christy Lee, your Sleep Number setting is? 45. That's a soft mattress. Once again, Mr. McGee? 100. I like a firm mattress. Too. And you can have either side at the setting you want. You can change it whenever you want so everybody's happy. Sleeping too hot or too cold, experts recommend keeping your bedroom temperature 65 to 68 degrees for the most comfortable sleep. Sleep Number also has temperature adjusting beds and bedding to help you sleep just right. Check out the Sleep Number bed at the Sleep Number store. Sleep Number Dot com is where you'll find them. In fact, if you go to sleepnumber.com slash BT show, you'll get some extra benefits. In fact, you can find out about that 50% off on the Sleep Number limited edition smart bed right now. Special financing available for a limited time subject to credit approval. See your Sleep Number store for all the details and sleep at the next level. Unlock your unique potential with the Sleep Number smart bed that can perform as well as you do. Sleepnumber.com slash BT Show. Coming up, it's our history lesson. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed later today on our YouTube awkward situations i feel like um recently in dc i I threw up in the street uh which isn't a big deal that happens i'm a pretty heavy drinker but uh what was different about this time was as i was about to throw up you know when you're when you're just starting to come up i made eye contact with a woman sitting outside of a starbucks yeah and then i held eye contact as i vomited oh So oh, it was just very amazing. awkward because she just saw me kind of look over at her and then go, Bleh! <laughs> and uh, I mean, did what's you, going uh, on in her reality? You know, does she, she you, wants uh, to watch that? To get her, didn't get her number. I did not get her number. <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid. You. What does she go home no, and did. say? I was so ugly today and made a man vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want her to think that. You know. <laughs> so I had to go over and tell her it wasn't the man, case. That's a bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, if, you're, if a man looks at you and vomits, it is a bad day. You need you need to visit your hairdresser <laughs> ASAP. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, T.J. Miller is our guest. Killer, yeah, right? it really is. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I, I get, yeah, I, I get into stuff like that. See, all I'm the time. a sympathy monitor. I would have, if he had made eye contact with me, I would have. I would have me too. You would vomit also. I would so join when, you. Yeah. So when you smell vomit, oh, like, yes. you immediately oh, vomit. Oh, well, say let's, goodbye. Let's, let's let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we've covered soiling ourselves and vomiting. Uh, vomiting. Well, well, what show. next? All right, yeah. let's go into pussy lesions. No. No, Bob, that's wrong in the script. It's not pronounced pussy. There you go. You know, it's read that way. I know it looks that way wow. on the page. Yeah. You know, if you read that wrong at the uh, audition, yeah. wow, that's a different movie. Yeah, well, what's entirely. This, Mr. Abrams, I don't it's understand. It's closer to a Mr. Skin film. Yeah, yeah I think so. I would say. Oh, yeah. So, uh, now, were you a big drinker in college? Yeah, I yeah I, I, I in college I think I, I I drank a little bit more than I, I do now. I, well, whenever. I, in college, whenever I drank, I would pass out. It was like my thing, you know. Mm-hmm. That's how people knew me. Mm-hmm. Uh, pass out guy. Yeah, it got to the point where even before I went out, I'd go ahead and draw a dick on my face. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna happen. It was gonna eventually. happen. Yeah. Your buddies were gonna take care of it anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just take it right. Oh boy, you know. Yeah. It, Why wait? It, was, right. it really is something else. I see. I don't. I, I'm really. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not. Oh, that's because it, first of all, what do they think it's gonna help? me? Me, you know, they yeah. think years from now I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be saying, yeah, I got really bad, you know, I was just drinking all the time, passing out, and then. Uh, one day I woke up, looked in the mirror, and I was like, TJ, get it together. I owe it all to Steve and his artistic ability to draw a ball sack on my forehead. <laughs> Good morning on the Bob and Tom Show. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Coming this Thursday on ABC, he's the luckiest guy alive. It's Invisible Dave and his two stacked roommates. Hi, Cindy. 
It's this darn brazier. It keeps oh. pinching. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Feeling fine. Yeah, yeah oh. mine's pinching oh, yeah. a bit, too. Let's just take them off. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. He's living rent-free and getting an eyeful. Cindy, what do you think of my new negligee? Do you think it fits? Oh, yeah. It looks great. What do you think of mine? <laughs> He's invisible and insatiable. Gee, Cindy, this bed sure feels lumpy. Boy, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Come to Papa. You know you want it. <laughs> Invisible Dave and his two stacked roommates. <laughs> Followed by the fast-paced action of pro basketball with a moral twist. Meet Carl Goodman, Amish power forward. <laughs> we have worked together, my friends. We shared the ball with he who was open and were blessed when two points were bestowed upon us. Now we must pray. <laughs> oh, merciful God of all it's Carl Goodman, <laughs> Amish Power Forward, right after Invisible Dave and his two stacked roommates. Thursday on ABC. <laughs> Ye be thar. <laughs> <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> Can I just say that I really love doing this program? Oh, thank you. You know, as a comedian, this is like such a fun, it's actually entertaining and fun to do it, you know? And as a comedian, you, you do a lot of shows. And, uh, you know, like I was, I did a radio program a few weeks ago, and they introduced me as the bad boy of comedy. Mm -hmm. I never said I was the bad boy of anything, nor do I want to be introduced as such. Mm -hmm. they get Only to? in comedy do you ever hear that. You never hear that in other professions. You never hear, he's the bad boy of gynecology. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. See, the, see, the, see the guy putting on his yeah. gloves with had his fingers cut off? Had his finger in a dike. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking with comedian Rick Schrader. I'm a stepfather, too, which I've been for a few years now. And uh, if you're not a step parent, you know, you don't realize the warmth and rewards that you get for the warm, loving feeling. And it's, uh, I hate you. Okay, here's some more money. You know, uh, you know, you're not like my real dad. You know, that's right. You can find me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> track, track down your real deadbeat dad and have him pay for these Barbie accessories. You know. Hey guys, it's Eli. Hey, Eli. Oh, hi, Eli. Hey, Eli. You nailed it, baby. It's about as low as it gets. You know what, Eli? You're just feeling sorry for yourself. Look, I was thinking, uh, there's no need to get down. I mean, just because you're grounded at work don't mean you can't gain yards. I've got a fresh, hot Papa John's pizza you could run by the house. <laughs> <laughs> God knows you wouldn't want to try to pass it to probably get picked off by the mailman. Oh. Oh, yeah. Right now, Killer Bees joins us in the studio. Uh, Bees, how you doing? Real good, man. I get up a shopping list over here. My wife's eating in bed now. She's at that part of the pregnancy where they crave all this food. Mm. Uh -huh. Some people have mirrors over the bed. We got a sneeze guard. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping on those posture pedic seal meal, man. <laughs> hey, you ain't lived till you're making love, and your wife says, "Go slow. I'm spilling my chili." <laughs> Essential morning radio all day and all night. Really? No, seriously. Really? Bob and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. What the hell is that? There's uh, Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, chick. Hey, there's Josh Arnold. Hi. There's Jessica Olsman. <laughs> hey. There's <laughs> he's called me. Hey. Willie Griswold. What's up? How are you, buddy? Chilling, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. I'm very excited about today in history. Are your nipples erect? <laughs> What'd you know? It's rather chilly in here. <laughs> yeah. If that's okay, what you're I want, suggesting. I'm on the record. I've not touched that Me since oh, boy, is it 7 15, 7 20. It was the last time mm. I touched it. I died. It's chilly in this room. Willie's rubbing one out over I'm there. I'm trying to get it going, but I can't even hit We're it. Okay. We're okay. <gasps> Um, uh, this is uh, something that Chip will enjoy, and uh, he can uh, do a quick... Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll review, okay. Uh, sort of a correction of the commonly felt thing. Uh, today is the uh, uh, day in 1859 when Big Ben went into operation. Oh, yeah, Big Ben's the bell, not the clock. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus! Scared the living daylight. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. crap my pants. Oh, yeah, Big Ben is the bell. That sounds like multiple bells. That sounds like many, many bells. That does not sound like Big Ben. <laughs> is that one bell? Have you ever saw one guy that pulls that big cord every <laughs> hour? Yeah, this is Big Ben. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, I don't know if you saw this. Uh, well, that's the two o'clock. In keeping with uh, the contemporary uh, uh, ways, uh, Big Ben, uh, they're going to take the big arms off, make it digital. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's just nice and exciting. <laughs> and just have a have a computer buzz sound. Whatever uh, you say, Shecky. Uh, Big Ben is uh, <laughs> gone. It's stopped what twice in the last month, right? Uh, yeah. When I was there in, in uh, eighteen, it was stopped. There, where they had scaffolding on it, the whole thing they were fixing it. Yeah, there's apparently some the battery or something. Eighteen seventy six, Madison Square Garden opens in New York City. No kidding. I didn't know it was that long ago. Yeah. Oh. Is it named after the president? James Madison? Yes. Billy Square. Billy Square. <laughs> Billy Squire. You're the Squire. That was right. the rock guy. <laughs> what? They're being silly. I don't get it. How? It, why is it named Madison Square Garden? I where'd just, the Madison come uh, from? Where'd the, where's the garden? I don't Madison see, time? I haven't seen any plants there. <laughs> Thanks, so so, what, so what, did, what did you have to contribute to this? That it opened in 1856? That was it. No, it's 1876. I had like, I was just saying Madison Square Garden, but it's a, it's an important date. How do you um, get to Madison Square Garden, Jake? Practice. 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 So on the uh, on the centennial of our country, Madison Square Garden opened. Maybe for the centennial? Could all be. Right. Ooh, Is that right? Be. Um, it's all very fascinating. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very old <laughs> A lot family. of nothing, wasn't it? Uh, 1884, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. Everything's everything. Patented oh. uh, cornflakes? <laughs> flake cereal, and it was a whole thing about masturbation. Yeah, it kept you. Keep yourself. It's like salt, Peter. It was a weirdo. Hands off yourself. Yeah. Uh, you maybe you know about this in St. <laughs> Louis. Uh, Chuck Berry. Um, Wipe yourself off, baby. Opened oh, up. Oh, is this the restaurant story? No, he opened up the amusement park known as Berryland. Which he, did that last very long? No, I don't think so. No, it's now Walt Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that? Yes, no. in St. Louis. Um, 1976, the Who set the record for the loudest concert, 120 decibels. That's why the Who now call each other the, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pete Townsend does. Yeah. Wow. Uh, don't open my laptop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, uh, Walt Whitman. Oh, I love his sampler. <laughs> yes. you know, by the way, there uh, there is a Walt Chocolate Disney Baron. World. Oh. There's a Walt Disney World. There's not a Walt Whitman World. No. <laughs> That'd be pretty dull. Sad. Well, it was so boring, I smoked the leaves of grass. Yeah, did you, did you ride the leaves of grass? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, happy birthday to Clint Eastwood. Yeah. 1930. Clint Eastwood. Full name Clint, Clint Torres Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? It's so hard to find him these days. <laughs> happy birthday, uh, 1943, Joe Namath. Oh, wow. Mm. Joe oh. Willie. Yeah. Kiss, kiss do you remember the name of, uh, uh, Ace, this is for you. Do you remember the name of the nightclub that got Joe Namath to briefly quit the NFL? I do not. And do you remember it? Bachelors 3. Bachelors 3. Very good. What the hell I was just, that? I just want to kiss. It was him. It was him. <laughs> Two and other dudes. Wasn't Paul Horning? Oh, no. Maybe it was a couple of wide receivers. But they, they, they opened a nightclub? Yeah. Mm hmm. And, and, yeah. they, um, and they were mobbed up, I guess, or yeah. that was a rumor. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. Um, happy birthday, John Bonham, the late drummer for Led Zeppelin. Amazing. Zeppelin. Happy birthday to the great guitarist Tommy Emmanuel, friend of the show. Mm -hmm. um, happy birthday to the great actor Chris Elliott. Love always, Chris Elliott. Always funny. Yes. So funny. Um, Someday I will be a cabin man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no one else is quoting cabin boy. Uh, damn right. 1965, Brooke Shields. She's got a new book out. Very interesting. Nickname Panty. Uh, happy birthday, <laughs> Lucy Griswold. Yes. Happy birthday, Lucy. Daughter, Lucy. Number, daughter number one of at least four. That Lucy. I know. Um, As of last counts. <laughs> uh, very good. But did you see, speaking of which, real quick, did you see the Al Pacino story? I did. Al Pacino, 83, expecting his baby number four with a 29-year-old 
former model. Had a boy, Al. Yeah, yeah oh. so. Wow. Say hello to my little friend. He's talking about his wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one that high school funny. graduation that I think will be dad free for that yeah. kid. Yeah. Oh. Dad free. Unless he pulls a Henry Kissinger and makes it to 100. Did you see that? Uh huh. How'd that happen? I, that guy, man. Oh, man. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, we'll have to sing we missed tomorrow. Glad, glad we he wasn't have, living in Cambodia when they dropped we'll the big one. We'll have what we learned today, <laughs> tomorrow morning. Oh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel.